How's it going? It is a day in July. My guess is the 15th. Feeling pretty good about that, actually. One for one. How's everyone doing tonight? Today? This morning? Hopefully you're all doing well. Sorry, I just had some tortilla chips. The best kind of chips there be. For lunch today, I had a patin with like hollandaise sauce, and now I don't have to eat food anymore for like a week. It's a very efficient expenditure. I'm I'm good. Marco J, how's it going? GG's. Uh Patrick, Beard Pirate. Excuse me, Patch Beard Pirate. Heck yeah, hit me with that good good never. Yo, welcome to the stream. How you doing? I hope we will. I hope we will. Ysengrin, yo, how's it going, man? Uh good stuff on the video. Um uh the the welcome. Ysengrin put out like a a jump video, like a guide video of like, hey, you've been playing startup. Welcome to standard and goes through some of like the most powerful cards on each faction. It's really nice. A Foley, what's up? What's good, Chad? Great day for some nuts. Yeah, it is. Spoon, how's it going? I see you there. Welcome. Yo, Jingles as well. Good morning, Andre. Hope you well. I am. Thank you. Bacon, how's your Thursday? It's been good. Um, Thursdays are nice. Again, had that big puts in with hollandaise sauce, so I haven't had dinner, but I don't think I need to. And then I remembered we had tortilla chips, just like President's Choice brand Tostitos, basically. Uh, and now I want to eat those. It's my Thursday. Uh, Doomster House, how's it going? Finally catching you live. Thanks for helping again to Neverner. Yo, cheers. Welcome. Glad I could help out. Glad you can make it live. Hopefully your your um, intro into Neverner, your welcome to Neverner has been pretty good. We're going to be playing some games tonight. I thought we were going to have a bit of a more structured stream tonight. We were meant to be joined by Whiteblade himself to go over uh, some of the like standard ban lists, talk about the meta in a constructive way. But unfortunately, we had to push that once again till next week um, for scheduling reasons. So hopefully next week. Sorry that we keep, I don't know if you're here specifically as an Eric Stan, not an Andre Stan. I get it, but uh, you're going to be upset. We set you up for failure there, so sorry about that. Startup deck of the week. Yeah, it is. It's also a loathing deck, uh, which I think is the second time now in a minute. And it's a really cool deck. I like this deck a lot. Uh, I think one of the best things you can say, too, is the write-up is great. So loathing, right? Like a pretty extensive write-up. And it's one thing to share your decks, which always has to be shouted out. Like sharing your decks is fantastic. But also having like a really comprehensive write-up for someone who might not be familiar with all the cards, might not be familiar with the game plan, or might not be able to like, you know, figure out how the deck works by just kind of looking at it, which is something, you know, that comes with time. Uh, that's really good. It's it's really extensive. So shout out. We're going to be playing that today. It's a startup deck, which honestly, we played startup throughout all of last month. And I've got a lot of feedback that still people love startup and are playing startup. And I, I hear you. I think startup is really great. I kind of wish I w w could play more. It's like, I don't know. I think Nisei said it too. It's like, it's just kind of short. If you could add one or two cards to start up, I think I'd be really excited. Just give me one meat damage tag card and give me like, I don't know. I don't know what else it's missing. Maybe make Jinteki playable, something like that, you know, and then I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll be really excited. But I've been having really a lot of fun with startup and I'm glad to be back in it. She's had her first in-person meetup this week. It was such a treat to miss all my triggers again. <laughs> so, um, yo, I have no doubt so many of us now are so used to playing on Jinteki.net. And specifically for the the sort of, like, there's no more Geist in the modern meta. But for any of the, the triggers that are, like, very intensive in terms of, like, physical upkeep, I think I'm looking at you, Keiko, specifically. I think Keiko is the one that really gets me, let alone the companions. Uh, well, not Keiko, excuse me, uh, Hoshiko. But not only the companions um, as well, speaking of Keiko, that get credits every time you steal a gen and have the text on top of them. I feel like there's going to be a lot of things that people are going to have to get used to playing in person again. <laughs> Yo, Nietzsche, don't worry. We're all Andre stands here. I appreciate it. But uh, your cover is still safe. Don't worry. These write-ups are great. Not always sold on the lists or loathing makes. This one is solid, but the write-ups are top-notch. What was the last deck loathing had? Because kind of enjoyed it. I'm hoping we hear about Bashes soon. I'm excited to see what people think of it. Yo, do we know when that is? I don't think we've heard anything about it. Bashes is the code name. 
of the next set that Nisei is working on. And I don't think Nisei has said that we'll get another set this year. Maybe I'm I'm making stuff up, but um, yeah. I love startup, but I really like small card pools. I hear you. It's great. It's easy. We haven't heard anything official yet. That's what I thought. Okay. Orbital Superiority is crying in its badness that you ignored it. We're not even going to play today. Today we're going to be playing Reality Plus in Standard, which is something I've never done. And abstractly, it sounds probably like I'm going to be upset with it. But uh, we can't only be playing the Fight Night decks. Talking about the Fight Night decks, if you haven't watched Fight Night, we talked about this last week. Fight Night is a tournament that uh, Vale uh, has been organizing. And basically, there's three groups. Where's the good Fight Night link? Where can I find it? Where can I find the Fight Night link? Oh, on Synchron's video, of course. Um, hold on. R plus is maybe good in Eternal. Ooh, why do you say that? Does it get stronger? I guess you do have, like, breaking news and stuff. So this is the video, not the video that I'm talking about, but this is the video we were talking about. But if you don't know what Fight Night is, this is an ongoing tournament. Um, that, uh... Well, it, it's ongoing. It's going to be three episodes of it that are streamed. The first one was streamed last week uh, on Vesper DBS's channel. I think you can, I don't know if you can find links in the document. The second is going to be streamed on Aki's channel, which I believe is twitch.tv slash Netscape Navigator. Netscape spelled with those amount of vowels. You nailed it. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it will be streamed this Sunday at a, starting at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So that's the time zone I'm in, EDT, actually technically Eastern daylight time i guess uh, but at one o'clock eastern it's gonna be starting on sunday i believe that is a matchup between snare bears and nwe if i'm not mistaken so the largely european largely german testing group and uh the b team <laughs> the beta team and uh snare bears and then we'll be streaming the last part the finale the ultimate conclusion will be streamed on this channel It'll be streamed one week from now on Friday. So Friday the 23rd, it'll be starting at 3 p.m. Eastern. So it'll be starting a bit earlier. Uh, it looks like Ysengrin is going to be joining for some comms, which is fantastic. And we have some other, we have uh, one other guest who's going to be joining as well. So super stoked for that. Hopefully you can come by. It'll be again, one uh, starting around three o'clock Eastern on next Friday. The 23rd will be streaming. It'll be about four hours. If you miss it, it'll be the VOD up on YouTube and Twitch as well. And I'm stoked because you're going to see some like really, really high tier caliber network which is fantastic excited to join i gotta get my better mic ordered oh yeah you poked me about that i, I didn't realize it was for that but that's awesome um it's a it's sometimes a bit tricky to find microphones and webcams right now but i think the market is a bit settled it was really bad obviously with the you know everyone working from home i actually have that friday off so i can catch this one heck yeah yo excited to see you there and again uh, aki will be streaming part two this sunday on their channel. So do check that out. Give them a follow on Twitch. And Vesper DBS, twitch.tv, Vesper underscore DBS got part one in uh, last Friday. I haven't seen the end of it. I've only caught the beginning of it. So I do need to catch up. But give both of these channels a follow. They do good Netrunner stuff. The Polish cards came out, by the way. Nisei has Polish translations. R plus is maybe can, it seems really nice for Railgun, according to other people. Ooh, yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, exactly. The Breaking News 24 7 combo decks. Because it. It's good. It has a good card draw in it. Um, sick. Okay. We're going to dive in with the deck list of the week. And this is one of Sir Loathing's decks. Uh, again, I really like the deck that this has such a strong write-up. Let's talk about what we're playing today. We're playing basically a good stuff criminal and we're playing Steve Cambridge. Steve Cambridge was an identity, if you're newer to Netrunner, that actually existed in the card pool before. It was part of an, an expansion called Terminal Directive, which was... Oh, actually, if you're new to Netrunner, ah, you gotta check this thing out too. But Terminal Directive was a legacy expansion. It was a box that was way too big for the amount of content that came in it, and it came with four identities and about like 80 cards, 60 to 80 Netrunner cards that were tournament legal on release. On top of that, it came with a bunch of other cards to play this campaign uh, that is a legacy campaign, one side play core one place side played runner the more you won the more cards you unlocked there was technically a story if you ask me it was not a very well executed thing it was kind of at the craze of legacy games and i think there could be a really good space for a re legacy um netrunner legacy thing i think it could be it i just want to say confidently it wasn't it if you want to check out a really good video trace five christian put together this video uh 2017 around the time that it came out maybe a bit later talking about what happened uh, and what they think, uh, what he thinks about this box. And do check this out. It's a lovely video. And there's a lot to talk about, Terminal Directive. But the point why I'm bringing this up is that Steve Cambridge was in the competitive standard meta for a while. Because all the Terminal Directive cards were. And then Terminal Directive 
was rotated out of um, out of standard. And now Steve recently came back in March this year with Gateway coming out. And uh, his ability was never like super common. Steve Cambridge wasn't like ever a tier one criminal. There was always better supposedly criminal options at the time. But Steve Cambridge would show up in a lot of competitive decks attached to a single other card. And that's DJ Fenris. DJ Fenris lets you go ahead and grab a G mod and get its text ability. And uh, if you if you haven't noticed, I guess Steve is a Gmod. So it was a really strong ability to get this for one influence for three credits that says every time you run HQ, basically draw a card and a really good card. It's a card from your deck and you can choose the right card for the right situation. Now, guess why I'm saying all this is that Steve never really had his time to shine. There were some really fun decks like Data Leak Reversal decks that were really good with Steve or really exciting to play with Steve. But I think Steve's ability is like, criminally pun intended underrated like just very very good ability we've seen a lot of these abilities run hq something good happens for a criminal but steve's ability is just an absurd amount of value so firstly it kind of looks bad because you got to choose two cards that are in your heap and mind you this is won't be online turn one usually you have to wait turn two turn three so he doesn't have that ag instant aggression you saw it out of ids like gabriel santiago but the idea is that when you run hq you get a free card draw and a lot of times what runners will do is they'll just show two of the same copy of cards they'll show two bravados that are in heap and then the runner chooses or sorry the corp chooses which bravado for you to draw so not a real downside and the idea is that when you run HQ, you get a free card draw of a really good card in your deck. It's just really good value. There's a chance like just getting a bravado and playing a bravado. A bravado, mind you, gives you five to six credits, right? Excuse me, uh, three to five credits when you play it. That actually compares favorably to Zai in some ways, right? Like if Steve Cambridge just recurs some sure gambles, sure, you have to play the sure gamble so it's not clickless like Zaya, but he is very capable of generating the same sort of economic value as Zaya, specifically in a long game, right? And I think that's fascinating. Um, there are some downsides to Steve. Again, excuse me, the corp chooses what card you could bring back. So say that you lose your Fractor to some program trashing subroutine, you'll never get it back if the corp doesn't want you to get it back if you only have a single Croder. And that's actually why this deck runs Buffer Drive, which we'll talk about this in a second. But it, it's just a very, very powerful ability. Imagine a card that said, when you run HQ, draw a card from your deck. That honestly would be a pretty good ability. And Steve has that, but it's better than draw a card from your deck. It's technically draw the card you kind of want at that situation. It also pairs really well with cards that fire if you've made a successful run on HQ. Things like Emergency Shutdown, fantastic. Run HQ, they have to give you one of these back. That's going to happen. Steve was pretty late at Magnum Opus uh, King of Service. I don't remember Steve being that great at that point. Yo, how's it going, Jester? Did you play him? Jingla says, I still haven't played through Terminal Directive. It's been sitting on my shelf for months. I would recommend you trying it, but I would. I don't think it's like, hmm. It's definitely worth playing if you have it, but I don't think it's good. But I think it's worth experiencing to see how they like kind of tackled the legacy thing and try and, you know, there's issues. Charles, how's it going? AO, yo, welcome. How you doing? Good morning. Yo, Sanjay, what up? Build your own version of Gift of the Magi when you Steve for buffer drive and the card you want. Gift of the Magi, that must be a, a magic card, right? How's it going, by the way, Sanjay? Yo, Seabass, also welcome. How you doing? So Loathing wrote a really good write-up and talking about every single card in the deck. And if you look at this, it's a Steve deck and it does some very good criminal things. You got good criminal run events. Bravado is a fantastic card. You have dirty laundry you want to be running a lot. You got a legwork. You got two inside jobs. So you got a lot of good run events, which is fantastic. You got great money. Uh, you have two mutual favors to find your breakers. And this is one of the big things about how criminals build their decks in startup and also in standard is that they generally run two mutual favors or some amount of mutual favors. And then they'll run fewer breakers themselves, one of each breaker. And this is a huge liability. It honestly is a liability because if this corroder gets trashed, that's it. You have some other ways to deal with barriers, but nothing permanent. You do have three boomerangs, one of the most powerful cards in the format, let alone inside standard. And you have two inside jobs, which again, sometimes that's three inside jobs with Steve. But uh, if this gets trashed to something like an SDS drone deployment, just a rogue subroutine on something, you have to get it back. And that's why this list is running buffer drive. Great to see you. Yo, Sanjay, cheers. It's fun to try and see how you could do it better. Oh, yeah, I, I, th I think that is a fun experience to see how you could do it better. Oh, Henry, short story. Oh, I don't, I'm not familiar with Gift of the Magic. I've heard of that. Okay, um, <laughs> Magic. <laughs> and the basis of a Muppet movie. How's it going, 421? So this deck card is in this deck specifically to recur something that's lost. If you lose a breaker, you can put it on the top of your deck. You can draw it. Good. 
good enough. Um, and a lot of games, as Loathing says, you just never install it. But this is the panic button. And the idea is that it's cheaper on influence to play this as opposed to something like a retrieval run or an uh, Harmony Therapy Access. I forget the name of that card, which is like three influence. I don't love that card, mind you. I've always kind of been a bit of a bummer on that card. And specifically, see, Steve might need less recursion. And also, his recursion might be a bit worse. Because, mind you, the other card the Corp doesn't choose or does choose gets removed from the game. So he doesn't have as that much built-in recursion. Anywho, other stuff we got. We got a Docklands Pass. It's a great as a one of. Love it. We have a single Lucky Charm, which I think is underrated in the format. There is a lot of people playing, uh, what's it called? Um, uh... The Void, Anoetic Void, Mana Garms Kunk works. This works really well, and you want to be running HQ anyways. It has a single Swift. I think this is weird. I think this is the one thing I might consider changing. I think Paragon is just a heck of a card. Swift is definitely nice. And it is worth saying that in the format, there are things like Anoetic Void, and mostly Anoetic Void, I guess, that really wants you to run the same thing multiple times. And this can help, getting you a click for a run event. Uh, but I think you probably want two, maybe, Paragons. Maybe you can try two Swifts. I think one Swift is maybe a bit too few. You don't have that many run events, though, but you do play them more often with Steve with Recursion. And a single prepaid voice pad, which is weird. Um, don't love this card. I feel like if you draw a turn one, it's pretty good. If you draw in the mid game, it generally doesn't pay off well enough. If you draw the late game, it's just a dead card. So I think this is something interesting to cut. Resources, you just have all the good stuff. You have Daily Cast, Earthrise, Hotel, and Class Act great staples of neutral and criminal stuff and they have two liberated accounts which i'm actually really interested to see liberated account gets a lot more playable because we are playing three career fair and it's also any card that has so much money on it is a really prime target for steve steve can say like okay i'm gonna bring back 10 credits worth of economy into my hand uh, after running hq like that is really good i think there might be some chance that you could consider trying to run the the mining card um, Telework contract, maybe. I don't know if it's one or two influence. I feel like it's two influence. So maybe this is better, especially with a career fair. We have a single copy of Mystic Miami, which we have enough run events. This is basically your better version of prepaid voice pad for two influence. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Paragon, how's it going, Richard? Then we have one of each breaker. The best killer in the format. I don't think we've ever seen any killer in the format through the whole month we've been playing uh, startup last month. Croder. You could play Cleaver here. I'm honestly not sure which one's better uh, in all formats. I, th I think Cleaver sometimes is better than Croder. And Unity is the best uh, code gate breaker for two influence. On top of that, you have Sneaker Beta, which is sick because you want to be running HQ. So it fires Steve's ability and you have a Dawkins Pass as well for additional value. Paragon equals Penny Shaver. Have I been saying Paragon this whole time instead of Penny Shaver? I think I've been saying Paragon. That's why I get it. Yeah, I meant to be saying Penny Shaver. Um, Paragon is like the old Penny Shaver. Yo, D&D, how's it going? Been a while. Hope you're doing well. I am. Thank you. I am doing pretty well. The summer's been all right. Things are getting a bit back to normal. It's a good list. Let's try it. I'm actually pretty stoked to give this a spin. We're going to be playing Startup again. If you don't know what Startup is, don't worry. I got you covered. Uh, hold on. I have to hit this button. Oh, look at it go. Oh, the animation. I'm going to import the stack. It should already be in Keyhole if you're watching. Did Paragon rotate? No, it didn't rotate. Arash, how's it going? It's just nobody plays it. Because everyone just thinks Penny Shaver is better. And the filtered card draw effect is largely covered by Class Act. So it's less necessary. <laughs> That's a sweet animation. Yo, Baza, how's it going? Josh, shout out to everyone. Eternal testing. It's been super fun. Yo, I need to try Eternal. So we talked a bit about Eternal. Um, I'm just going to queue up for this. But basically what Eternal was is it's a format that has been recently touched with some new balancing changes so it's a bit more approachable uh and it has changes so i'll show you what they look like but well, basically every deck has five influence or five experience to spend five points to spend uh that you can spend on a list of cards that are considered to be very powerful in eternal and i know a lot of people have been actually testing eternal i kind of want to play it i kind of i do kind of want to try it because it does kind of look fun How's it been for people playing it? Is it like solved? Does it feel degenerate? Does Andre just want to play Data Leak Reversal? <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, anyone interested, come join in. So Giles shared the Discord link for Eternal. Jeez, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excited for Startup is my favorite format these days. Yo, yeah, I know. I've, I've hearing that from a lot of people. Thanks, you too. Um, I've been having a ton of fun with Startup. Five hacker bucks. It's going up to seven points most likely. Oh, no way. Been, but adjusting things. Yeah, I have no doubt like the whole process is going to be iterative. So um, this hand is like not amazing. 
Uh, we have like we don't have any burst decon besides bravado. So like if we had to do any opening here, we also have a dead card with buffer drive. Um, I'm gonna mulligan this because I want to open up with like a hedge fund or a dirty laundry into class act something like this. Like if we play the class act, our turn is just like click three class act. You could maybe do credit credit casts into class act and then really hope we draw dirty laundry. But I feel like our deck is just all good stuff. Yeah, like that's fantastic. There's some mistakes in the in the first like the first list. Yo, Brick, what's up? SVA is shockingly still broken. That's a salvage vanitas, a card that was banned before it was released for being a bit broken. I'm uh not surprised to see it, but I actually never understood the SVA combo. I think SVA and Railgun are like four or five turn wins. Rely be through tech. Ooh, so probably those are gonna get knocked down a bit. Cool, cool, cool. Update, looks like we're gonna move to seven points. System cards are gonna be three, two, one points. SVA's busted will be moved to seven points. Railgun's busted and the power shutdown version will likely be nerfed. Cool. And that's like what's so excited about Eternal is that like it can't just get testing. It can't just get modified to a point where everyone's happy with it or most people are happy about it. And the whole idea of like having a three point card, that feels good. All right, we're playing against Mirror Morph. They want to do three different things. So they played red level clearance as an operation. They installed a card. They installed a card. I don't know what this is. There's a big chance it's something like a Bailey or a nano etching matrix. Uh, we don't really want to run HQ just yet. Did they mull? Rick mulled. So there's a chance that there's one agenda in hand. We I don't love slamming down sneak door beta. A lot of times I like playing sure gamble. Like I like running and forcing them to ice spend ice resing HQ before we like go to a different attack angle. It's in your best interest to, to force them to res first. So I think we're just gonna go sure gamble into honestly probably Maker's Eye here. Vasherons are good to steal early. I think we're gonna just Maker's Eye. We could also just like run HQ. Nah, eh, we have an open Maker's. I think we can just like draw Maker's Eye daily casts. We can also poke this. This can't be a Rashida, so there's no like asset I'm really scared of. Let's just start here. I've enjoyed the two games of Eternal more than standard games for the last few months. Cool. Punitive. Okay, this is really good. This is why you want to do this early to figure out what kind of deck we're playing against. So we're assuming they're on three pointers. So Ikawa and send a message. Uh, Eli and Punitive. So they're going to try and kill us. So good to know. Uh, really good to know. So we want to keep our money up if we're accessing. They probably also only have about seven agendas. Probably six three-pointers and a luminal would be my guess. We'll draw, and it's liberated. If we install this, we'll be down onto six credits next turn, so we can open up with a liberated, which is good. Let's figure out what this is. Yeah, Nico. Okay, that's actually definitely worth trashing. Because they made a credit profits resing it, and the card draw would also be good. So we know they have a punitive in hand. Uh, we have no damage tech. There's, like, no damage tech in this format whatsoever. Um, so our big play is basically to keep, and there's no way for us to deny them credits outside of emergency shutdown. Um, a cool thing is that when we run HQ, we do get a free card draw, regardless of what it is. So sometimes like just, you know, giving us more cards in hand makes it easier, easier for us to interact or not die to punitive sometimes. They drew into Eli too, which might just go on server one. So I think we're going to run that first click. If we trash this though, we won't be able to, um, to liberate accounts, but I think we want to make them spend three on Eli and then we'll still trash this for two. And then probably draw. Anacom's pretty decent punitive tech. Yeah, Brick, you're right. Anacom's like the hot tech. Ooh, they sprinted last click, so they probably have agenda shuffling back in. Yeah, Anacom's good. I think Anacom might be the best damage punishment, uh, prevention. Isn't there the hardware that's not DZMZ? DZMZ? Uh, it is. Hand size kind of is a thing, but it's like, yeah. Run fearless. Yo, John, what's up? Run like hell, don't die. Easy game. I appreciate it. How you doing, man? It's been a minute. We're going to see each other in person, I hope, sometime soon. I spoke. I'm assuming it's an Eli. We'll click through an Eli. Yeah, there you go. So they spent three. We're going to deny them uh, six on a card draw. So we're going to click on this and do it the proper way. And we have drip econ, so that's kind of good for us. And then we can just draw one click. We also could run the top of R&D here. And we have a chance of hitting an agenda here because they did shuffle their deck. So it's not the red level clearance, which actually they drew with sprint. Uh, but they could have double punitive and we could die. I'm just gonna draw. DZMZ. That's I think the way that make everyone happen. Happy. Diogene money's a second damage tech after harmony error therapy. Harmony error therapy isn't damage tech. Like it doesn't stop you from dying, but it stops value damage from being a problem. But Anacom is really good against damage. Soon we bought too many tournament packs, never see each other again. Yo, we gotta play like uh Vampire Eternal Struggle. We have a lot of tournament packs. 
Uh, I want to play Flesh and Blood. Pers- I got really into Flesh and Blood recently. The card is so bad, I had to go on a podcast just to call it out. Which one? Harmony AR? Okay. So here we can consider poking HQ. We would basically be getting a sure gamble or uh, Maker's Eye. I'm pretty sure they'll just give us our gamble. But we can run HQ here. They may rest something big. There's a chance they have big ice in their deck because they're considering playing Send a Message. So we can double click through this Eli and last click we can always run archives to gain three if money's really bad. We do have to watch out sometimes they can throw out an agenda to like bait us into punitive. T400 memory diamond. Okay, nobody nobody liked that card, did they? Was anyone excited about that? And Tom, talk about flesh and blood some more. Uh, I will. Remind me maybe between games because my, my stances, my opinions on it are a bit different than they used to be. Now that I played more. That's a punitive. Nothing learned. Uh, they didn't give us the money. They gave us multi access. They're basically saying, we're going to get you. Um, okay. I wonder if they're also on uh, public trail just to make us lose money. <laughs> I snap on days live and I'm work. Is he clapping people high profile target again? Yo, housekeeping. How's it going? Um, unfortunately, it's startup. So there, there's, if anything, we're going to get clapped by punitive. I saw a lot of people, new people slotting it. Oh, beans. I played it for about a week. Oh, no, beans. I really don't like cards that don't do anything on tempo. I'm not a good shaper player. All right, so they drew, they installed. They might just click for credit to get a second credit off of the mirror morph ability again. This is really tricky to play in person. It's another one that Shinteki.net really helps you with. And the thing is that because we know they're on 5-3 agendas because they're a punitive list, we don't often have to run a remote server unless they go install advance advance. Barring the maybe the one luminal transubstantiation in their deck. There you go. You got their money. Okay. So we know we can always dirty laundry through the Eli, but we want to wait until we have value from that. So I'm going to draw and just set up the liberated. Uh, shutting down these is like good enough value a lot of the times. There's also a sick target for boomerang. So if anything, I think we like we get this into the bin. And then eventually we like boomerang HQ. I don't know. I'll just get this down again. If we have money, we're safe. Problems we don't have breakers. Let's see what this is. Again, I don't know. I don't know what the assets could be. Oh, they had a subliminal. I didn't realize that. That's definitely worth paying attention. That is definitely worth running. Uh, even if we like dirty laundry archives or just poke HQ to stop them from getting this. Oh, it's a regolith. Okay, well, that's how they're going to try and get big money. We have to tear that down like our life depends on it. Because it literally does. I wonder if they're going to try and like mirror morph so they don't click this twice. Okay. So we'll boomerang this and we'll run. Then we can hopefully boomerang through that click click. So this is three subroutines that might be awkward. We kind of want to goad them into resing a big thing because we can de easily e shut down them. Let's see what they got here. I don't know what we're worried about. Hagen is fine. Uh, we could maybe end up with a tag if it's like a Pharos. We haven't seen any influence besides the punitive. Assuming they're on three of them, that's six influence. I don't know what this could be. Even just like a toll booth might not might be uh, not surprising. Okay. So we'll click, oh, that's the wrong button. Uh, I'm going to do the, the proper way. Normally, I would just decrement my clicks. So now we made a run, and we trashed this thing. And our boomerang is still safe. They'll probably overinstall this, but that's fine. It just gives us another target for Steve. And this is, Cleaver is like better at dealing with Eli, right? Cleaver's three. Yeah, Cleaver's actually, if you're seeing a lot of Eli in your startup meta, I think you play Cleaver over... um. Of Crowder, because Crowder breaks us for four without support. Cleaver is three without support. Um, Crowder, I reckon, is better against uh, uh, Braun, but I'm not even sure about that. They know we have a Maker's Eye, so this kind of makes sense. I think at this point we might consider Dirty Laundering HQ. Oh, uh, well, we need another card in there. Uh, we can set up. I think we might just dirty laundry archives just to stop them from subliminal messaging. Yeah, we'll dirty laundry archives and then put down an earth res. That seems nice. We have to just make sure that if we hit this and there's an agenda in here that we'll like liberate it. So they threw out a drafter, which is good to know. 
now we're on 15. So they played hedge funds, one subliminal. Pharaohs and three advanced Akets are Corroder's selling points. Oh yeah, Aket is really, really good for a Corroder. Um, so I've had two opponents on Dana tell me two different things. How much does it cost to override the boomeranged ice? One credit, two credits? Oh, you destroy it first before installing, so it'd be one. I'm pretty confident it'd be one. <coughs> That's a nano itching. So if they hit this, it's like, you know, it's good. But it's not a reason we should run this. Like now at this point, we just pressure centrals because the longer. Oh, I didn't. What did we do instead of playing this? I hit liberated. What was I doing? I can't get to five strength eventually, Rush. Oh, I was meant to play that. That's such a bummer. Uh, but this thing is like we'll wait for them to um put something into the remote server. I think at this point we just actually bravado HQ and then we choose from these two. I used Subliminal back when it first came out. I'm glad to see people are finally appreciating how this card interacts its namesake. Pretty good card in my opinion. I think it's a fantastic card in my opinion. I also think that the, they knock the art out of the park. Like that's such a, a hard art to do. And it's like good to the old card. So we'll just take our two options. The Corp can choose. Like run HQ draw daily cast. Like that's sick. That's really good. I think they'll give us the, the laundry. I mean, the cast. I don't think they want us to run. Oh, wow. Okay. Spin Doctor. Yeah, we'll charge that. If 17, and we'll put down the Earth Rays. I like to trash the Spin Doctors because they're good cards. They're strong card draw cards. And it lets them recur some of their combo pieces, like Punitives. Not that they'll value Punitive this, that, us that likely. Cost whatever would cost you install an ice in the new spot. Trashing the ice with boomerang on it costs you nothing. You just have to take the install ice action and trash the ice as normally. Yeah, you basically trash the ice while installing, but before the ice hits the table. So that like I think the good way to remember that is like, why would you do it if it didn't make it cheaper? Like you do that to make it cheaper. So you can trash this ice, install an ice here, and pay one instead of two. If it was two, you would you'd almost never trash it, right? I don't think there's any good reason to trash it if it didn't save cost. You just leave it there to eat the boomerang. Oh, no, that's not true. That's not entirely true. Because of Stilly the Boomerang. Okay, so we have Swift. I think we can run server two. Uh, Drafter would be kind of bad. Ugh, this is a grindy game. We want another card in our heap for, uh, for Steve. So running HQ is not amazing. We could definitely like pop down the sneak door. I think we draw once to figure out what we're doing this turn. That's good. I don't want to career fair this out. But I think we can just like Mystic Miami, Dirty Laundry, Archives. Again, they have to generally double advance cards. Maybe there's a chance they like seamless launch something out. But I think we can do Mystic Miami into Dirty Laundry. Their money is good. This is probably a regolith if anything. We, we They like that card. So we can do... Maybe we can just do, yeah, we'll, we have to do Swift Laundry. That's better. Isn't Mirmorph usually a grindy game? Not always. I think they can have some like pretty uh, fast scoring plans. I, I think it's a bit more in, um, they threw out a magnet, in, uh, in Startup, or sorry, Standard, where they have MCA, because MCA is a bit more of a direct win condition. And we'll get this on the table. Jogging, I don't know if I said hi. Hey. But yeah, I think you might be right. I might be one of the more grindy games. I wonder if there's any other support they have. Like we haven't spent a lot of, seen a lot of influence yet. We've seen Spin Doctors and Punitive. They could possibly be on. Uh, oh, that looks like Managarm. Let's see if we get a double advance on this one. Double advance doesn't really work with their ability pretty well. Nano etching. Damn, they got good tech for us. So is that an agenda? So basically, Ice gets plus two strength. That's huge. We know one card in their hand is a punitive. I think we just continue to set up. Like, we can still inside job this remote server pretty well. Yeah, we have mutual favor. Right now, the only thing that we want is... Uh, but they might be on rotator. I don't know. It also could also... Like, with the 23 credits, I'm kind of scared of... um. 
Corporate Troubleshooter, which could be absolutely ruinous. So I think we're going to career fade down the daily casts, and then what's the rest of our turn? Like, we could poke down a sneak door bait and hit HQ. I think you want to get EH hit on? We already have one, though. That's unique. I think we can draw to 8 now and salt stall. Yeah. So the best tech against Krim is not bypass, no boomerang. You can bypass this. You can, you can inside job this. But yeah, we could really draw an inside job. I'm going to just creep fair this down and click for two credits, I think, which is kind of bad. Maybe we could put down the sneak door. I feel okay putting down the sneak door. Uh, we might not have enough credits, so whatever. I'm just going to do something really slow. We probably want to draw here, actually. We can draw and throw out the worst card, which will be the emergency shutdown at this point. We have three of them, and they haven't res any big guys yet. It's really nice to have the career fair lined up with the Nerf Rise that we're going to install next turn for one. Kind of like slamming sneak there because you get two turns to exploit it. Yeah, I hear you, but I don't think they have any agendas in their hand, right? Like, I think they would do more than an Eli if they had agendas. Ah, oh, subliminal. But maybe you're right. I just don't think they're scoring anything yet. Like, we have to wait for the advance advance. I just don't understand why. Okay. What is this? Is this luminal? Like, did they just value next activation? It looks like they did. Nano etching. So they get another action. So they can, like, install an ice or something. Yeah, okay. So now the sneak door is better. Let alone, we do want to get in there, and we should have enough money to be safe. Uh, order here doesn't matter. Prepaid so bad. Extra Steve trigger or something? Yeah, extra Steve trigger is legit. So I'm okay with them scoring agendas. Send a message doesn't really matter. If they score a Vashron, whatever. So I think we can just slam the sneak door and go in for value. So this, if it's successful, which it will be, we run HQ and then Steve triggers. So we can pick two cards here. Uh, we have two dollars on Mystic Miami. So I don't want I don't want to do Earthrise. Um I think we can pick E shut down. Ugh. I think we do laundry or bravado. Bravado's really good. Wait, did they use the MM click to advance again? I was only paying half attention. No, they used the click to just gain a credit. But they actually get an extra click because of the way uh subliminal works, right? The X is punitive, no surprise there. Okay. So we can clicklessly gain five credits, run archives. Not amazing. So we definitely want to get this down. We probably should have just ran this first click, honestly. So now they're forked between like getting something on H on archives or this. I think we can just dirty laundry for clickless value just because it, I don't know, it's five credits for free. It seems silly not to. Obviously, we're not getting a good access here, which is a bit of a bummer. And I'm going to draw last click. That was a nightmare turn. Don't don't play like that. Yeah, if we drew first, we could have boomeranged this remote like, oh, we look really silly. Oh, it's to send a message. OK, so now the E shutdowns will look a bit better because, yeah, full booth makes sense in this sort of list. Okay, order doesn't matter. We do have a leg work. Uh, I wish we had the E shut down here. This is a nice thing to, to inside to what's it called to boomerang. It honestly might not be the worst running this, but we would definitely start by um, we played this dirty laundry so many times by sneak dooring. We actually could hit this button a couple times. We're very safe to punitive. So I'm gonna do E shut down because they won't give us that. Maybe actually that's a mistake. I'm going to get. Dirty launching career fair. Where the nasty face checks drafter is like the kind of the bad one here. I'm not that worried about it. Actually, Hagen would be bad. Hagen would trash our sneak door. <laughs> it's another punitive, probably the same one. Hagen would be bad. But at this point, we just need to get our breakers on the table. And once we get two of these in the bin, uh, like that's really good for us because then we can make sure we get the last one. Do we install prepaid voice pad? Twenty one cards. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Whatever. Did we play an event this turn? Not that cost money. Okay. So I don't feel terrible about that. 
Now we can face check pretty, pretty freely. There's no code gates that trash programs, right? And we have enough money again. They're going to spend money resing all this stuff. Like we'll force them to res here. And then we can run server two, get the under monogram. Can you choose a trash boomerang to install a new one? You totally can. Government subsidy. Oh yeah, right. Of course. Good. Good stuff. It's actually really, really strong. It's, you definitely want to do that. Okay, we got the E shut down, so we're definitely going to commit here. Uh, the code gates, if it's a magnet, it's fine. If it's Enigma, whatever. And now we know the value of this. Any unique card, yeah. Ooh, it's a brawn. Do we shut this down? This is annoying. So for this to break is four, five, six. I think we're going to double click and then let the first subroutine fire. They can install from archives. I forgot about that. So they can put a magnet here or a drafter. Probably should have clicked through that, honestly. I didn't realize this from archives that, that was only from HQ. I forgot about this a lot. That's bad. Yeah. Uh, it's a magnet. So at least we'll force them to spend three more credits. So they spend nine that turn. That's good. Uh, let them broke a step fire. Cool. Okay, we're catching up. Once we have all our breakers, they'll sweat a bit. We would love to get them underneath the government subsidy money. And again, oh man, Eli, four credits to break Eli is just a problem. Just a problem. We also did not use our prepaid. So far, our prepaid has been minus two credits. Technically, the click to play too. So let's see if this ever works out for us. Okay, order doesn't matter. We definitely want to play a run event. So I'm just going to bravado HQ. Uh, I'm going to use one of the prepaids. Oh, that's a really good card. And two of these. Free value. It's also clickless. So we're way better clicking through buy rights. That nano chicken working full time? It is, but it's generally not worth trashing. Okay, that's fine. We'll bounce off of that. We still got a lot of money. Solid ice distribution. This is good. This is actually really good for them. Um, so now once we get a unity up, this is two to break. This is still four. We'll probably boomerang this as much as possible. Uh, maybe it's wrong. Maybe we do trash this. I don't know. It's just like we have to spend. F no, there's no way. It's a problem now that they're not using a server. Like that was something we had going for us. I'm going to try and pressure what's assumedly a minor garm. Because we still have clicks to click through subroutines if we were really scared. We haven't seen any killers yet. Or any sentries. And there's a chance that just against Spigalter you don't want to res most of them. Like we break Drafter for... Like, what? Two credits? Doesn't feel good. A lot of times, you know, if there's no agenda and there's a defensive uh, thing, that's sometimes the best time to run it. Especially if it's like an anoetic Void or something they can't really afford. Yeah, there you go. It's a Monogarm. So sometimes it's easier there to deal with it than any other time. So I think we'll just install the class act. Take two. There's a big chance we'll draw into a unity with this. We did. And now we're all gas. So we can drop our unity, drop our boomerang, dirty laundry this, get a card back, shut down this. I don't know. We'll figure it out. The thing is right now is like, I don't know how they're going to win. Because we're controlling pretty well. That being said, they can jam a lot of stuff and we have to run it as long as it's double advanced. And their money is pretty good. <laughs> that watching so good. Okay, let's get the unity on the table. I think it's our best interest to boomerang this thing. Uh, actually, is it? Because if we, we could legwork, like we know one card here. I'd love a Docklands Pass. But we probably could just boomerang it. This is clickless, which feels really nice, honestly. We'll always use this first. Well, not always, but right now we will. You don't want this to get too full because it becomes a problem. Man, we actually have to boost twice for full booth. Feels bad. Encounter, boomerang it. Interestingly enough, we can choose two boomerangs, and they actually have to choose the right one because if they choose the wrong one, one of them will be shut down. 
Offer shutdown versus bravado. I think if we're going to offer shutdown, we're going to do two shutdowns just so we can play more shutdowns. Like, interestingly enough, we could do two boomerangs, but it doesn't really make sense. I think at this point we'll do liberated cat. I think like we really need to do two liberated for this to be good. So do we have an earth? We do have an earth rise in hand. So I think we're going to do just two career fair for now. Wait, what did I pick? Wait. I don't think I picked two career fairs. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't pick a single boomerang. Doesn't make sense. Drag it around? I don't think you can. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do RFG, which means remove from game. And then I'll click on the screw for Thanks. So we hit the punitive again. They probably have two again. It's lethal if they have two. Shovel that back in. No, I think that worked. Oh, no, it didn't. Uh... No, it didn't work. Fixed. We good now? I think we're good now, right? <laughs> Party. So we'll definitely shut this down. If they ever spend eight credits for that, we're like, we're pretty happy. Uh, Cause they need money also to res all this ice and then money to stop us from uh, makers eyeing. And at this point, we can just career fair down the earth rise. And this is a very good draw on top of the class act. Did you have two boomerangs in there? Uh, no, I think only one. It was the one that was here. The second one was in there, but that's the one we played. So that one got shuffled back. So technically we had two in there, but uh, one should be shuffled back. Because we were mid boomerang run, right? They only have 16 cards left, right? Dang. I had two, yeah, yeah, but one was mid-play, right? Because it trashed just once we got through the uh, Eli. So there's still one in the bin? Yes, yeah, yeah. Your head's in the way? Oh, yeah, sorry, there's one underneath my head. So sorry, yeah. Uh, that looks like a spin doctor or um, a Nico. So we'll do Earth Rays first, not that it matters. So Boomerang, Inside Jog, Class Act, we definitely don't need the, the what's it called? The second class act. I would love um, a double access on HQ here. Our money is still pretty good. Ugh. I think this is again where we boomerang HQ and dirty laundry it because they drew a fair bit that turn, right? Yeah, I think we just do that over and over again. And then we just get so much Steve value. Can we do two shutdowns? We can do two shutdowns. That's a lot of battle. <laughs> I'm about to be burned. We haven't seen any seamless launch yet, so I'm not worried about an unadvanced card. Maybe actually we want to run r and I'd be okay with running r and If there was a toll booth, right? Like they spend eight, we lose uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, all our money is interaction based at this point. Do we just inside job for single? No, I think we maker's eye. I think we maker's eye for, for click list. Yeah, we'll definitely make our science click list. And I think we have enough money to survive. We can spend the rest of our turn clicking for credits if we really need to. Or like boomerang dirty laundry HQ for very little. Now here we want to force them to res because, again, they now have spent actually eight credits here. So we lose three when encountering. This is a good thing to inside job later in the game. So we'll boost, boost, break. We're still 17 to 18. They'll probably spend more money than we will spend uh, breaking it. Unless it's an Eli. I think actually we want to double click because I don't think our, our clicks are worth two credits because this is a break for four. Uh, break for four puts, yeah, are our, our, our clicks worth that much money? I don't think so. But if we hit two agendas, we're going to be in a problem. Oh, sorry, I have to encounter this first. Because two agendas, the punitive can land pretty easily. Maybe they pop a, a dock. Is this startup? Yeah, the deck list of the week right now is startup. How's it going, Wacko? So we might just spend the rest of our turn clicking for credits. Because they always do like nano etching, punitive, punitive. And it'll be close. 
Vacheron, okay. It's good to get that earlier than later. Regolith, uh, that's fine. We need to keep our money up because of punitive mana ground. We need to keep our money up. Actually, we only need a single punitive. We should have trashed a Regolith then if we were thinking this was an agenda. But this card's so unfair. Jeez. Jeez. At least we didn't get it right before they're going to win. So. It's worth zero agenda points. It, punitive still works out for this, right? So we could go down to 14. They can't double punitive us. Ugh. Okay. I'm just going to do credit credit. Because they need a punitive of us twice, and they don't have twice our money. Bastion is an unfair banlist says so. <laughs> what? Oh, it is a luminal. Damn. All right, at least they're on 12 credits here. So now they're on game point. Right? That was the one agenda we thought would be a problem. So red level clearance, probably draw the game two. They can't score agendas, and they install a non So we know this is a non-agenda. So it might be a regolith. It is a regolith, because they drew it. Yeah, we should trash that for sure. It's a lot of money for them. Okay, <laughs> ban everything. So we let's see what we're gonna draw off the top. Filter draw, Maker's Eye, Dock and Pass, Lucky Charm. I do like Lucky Charm a heck of a lot. Uh, Maker's Eye is really good too, though. I think it's not gonna be Dock and Pass. We have a legwork in hand. Okay, <laughs> so this is something we probably want to bring bring down. It's interesting that their punitive windows get smaller and smaller, but because of Vashron, they can drag into the remote more often. Uh, three cards off the top of R and D are fresh. So, I think a lot of times we want to run like run HQ. Like we want to do boomerang, dirty laundry, shut this thing down. Uh, we also could like boomerang, dirty laundry, install lucky charm, run server two as well. But they just want to drain our money on this. Is it going to cost us more than nine credits to bring this down? Because it's just about parity at this point, right? Like they can get nine credits off of this. But if, it's, if we spent six credits breaking ice, admittedly they have to res ice too, which is not the worst for us. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know if we chase that right now. I feel like we don't. I think we just start. We keep blasting. If we heal, hit an agenda, we actually have to play another operation. Whatever. <laughs> Basic action card, am I right? Steve's ability. So I think we'll do shutdown, shutdown. I don't think there's any money that's not like interaction based. Make him spend 16 credits on a single ice. Punitive. No surprise. Shuffle that back. Okay, cool. So I think we can punitive this. Or sorry, uh, emergency shutdown this. We can run back. We'll see three new cards. They could do nano etching, regular punitive. They couldn't punitive us a second time. I think we can make our eye, right? Because they spend eight on this. We lose three, four, five, six. And then this thing's an issue because we have to spend four on that. So actually, I don't know. There's a chance we inside job this just for a single access. Does that feel good? It's free inside job. I don't think so. I think we just click two and keep the inside job for the remote. Maybe we draw one. Sick. Hoping we don't need this because we can't recur anything anymore. We haven't seen anything that uh, suggests that they're on um, Corporate Troubleshooter yet, though. All right. Actually, instead of clicking for credits, we 100% should have put a... Uh... Oh, no, it's not. You can install this whenever. I thought this was install only if you're on of HQ. I'm thinking of political operative. This card's good. This card makes Managarm look silly. Okay, we have no more drip economy. And okay, we'll not take that. Okay, so at this point, we'll just play a free maker's eye. And if they res, so be it. And then we can just click for credits. <laughs> Actually, we'll boomerang this and then, yeah. That's better. Oh, no. Now they know that we have that. Didn't want to do that. Wanted to play this. 
They might not res. I think actually it's in the best interest not to res here. Because then they actually have yeah, a credit uh, advantage when it comes to punitive. I think that makes sense. So we can't win here, really. Punitive, nice. Send a message, okay. So they can free res the toll booth that they didn't res here, so... Really well played. We're on game point, though. Ravana. And now if we don't die this turn... If we don't die now, Punitive is now dead, so we don't have to respect anything. And unfortunately, we didn't get a Vashron, so uh, we're going to have to actually steal the last send a message, or this game is going to be a huge grind on this remote server. So they might actually just value Punitive us here, because we don't have um, cards. Like, uh, they have no more win con. Uh, at this point, we could just consider, like, we need to do something with this. Trash one card from your grip at random. That can be a problem at random. I think we'd rather just, like, inside job something. You can still die to Vash later. Yo, that's true. Yeah, it's, no, it's just true. Yeah, we can die to Vash around later. That's totally true. Do we have an inside job in here yet? No. Sorry that you can't see the heap that well. Uh, Like, I don't want to... I think we can draw once. Draw a gamble. Yeah, that was it. That was the perfect draw here. I'm going to use all of these just to get a huge burst of economy. We probably should have planned our turn further and not immediately done that. But now they can't really pin the best. Could be looking for another event. Yeah, Solomir. That was the play for sure. I don't know if clicking for credit there was last was right. So we have eight cards left in our deck. If we were smarter, we would know exactly what they are. It's one inside job. I know that for sure. One liberated accounts. Uh, one more sure gamble. Two more sure gambles, actually. That's a lot of money. Vashron keeps the punitive plan alive. Yeah, Disperse. I keep forgetting about this. Vashron's a hell of a card. Now, if we hit the send a message, we win on the spot. But now we have to be dragged through the remote a fair bit. They just sprinted, so we know less of their hand. They probably sprinted the punitives away because they don't need them as much. Maybe not, actually, because of the Vashron point. Regolith, whatever. <laughs> Nano etching, 27 credits. Okay. We just got to keep our money above their money. And that's the thing is about these sort of decks. They're not forcing us to run that often, so we could, like, sit back. Maybe you should have drawn the class act early to protect from punitive. Oh, that's true. It's actually another protection for punitive. You're totally right about that. But I think we have enough money that we're not too scared. But I hear you. I think if we draw a boomerang, we'll actually inside job this remote. Well, let's see what we draw. Okay. Do we inside job for a single axis? That feels kind of bad. But the only other multi axis we're going to have is if running HQ to get a maker's eye. On the spot, AKA in one more turn, despite having scored the Vash run when we were all much younger. I'm not sure I follow Sanjay. We'll be on six points soon. So, like, okay. I'd rather need more than 50% of their money. Uh, what do you mean, Dejin? I think we need, uh, we need, well, it depends on how many cards in hand. If we have two cards in hand, we need twice their money. Vashron takes forever. Yes, it does take way long. Way longer than you think. So, we could inside job this, and then we would get in pretty cheaply. We don't have a boomerang. We can inside job this for a single, and we basically have a one and eight of winning on the spot. Otherwise, we just have to survive the Vashron and still check the remote server when they jam into it. Unfortunately, we're doing nothing here to click for credits. Like, to do good credits for us. Dockland Pass, Sneak Door, it's really expensive with Brawn. And I don't really want to double access HQ. They did sprints to some extent, like the HQ pressure is a bit better. How hard is this to get through? Like if we just Sneak Door here, this is like what, four, five, six, seven credits? Like we can't do that. When did R&D get so thin? Uh, they drew pretty aggressively. I don't know what to do here. Happy Thursday, I almost forgot about the stream. I didn't get the Twitch notification. Oh, Jankovic, sorry about that. I don't know why that happens sometimes. Uh, I don't know, y'all. I think we just want to chop deck into a sure gamble and keep our inside jobs for the remote. This feels like it's forcing our hand in a certain direction. Which direction? I don't know. I'm assuming there's more big ice into the, into the deck. <laughs> you know, the secrets of this R&D's diet. Yo, Phil, what's up? Like, I don't know what we do here. It's too late in the turn. I'm going to just draw for a boomerang, I think. This is good enough. Like we can play this clicklessly on server two, force some reses, and if not, we get money. I feel like that's okay. I feel like that's credit positive for us. Because the deeper we go, and we can bounce off this. Daklin's inside. I don't love it too much. Because we still have to pay four for Eli, and that might be disastrous. Like I think we need a boomerang Eli. Maybe I'm a bit too conservative. This is a huge matchup where uh, Cleaver is better than Croder. We save one credit every time we break one of these. Maybe I'm just a coward for not paying four for an Eli. Eli's good. I love running a remote that they're not intended to, to, to spend money on. 
Because that's an interesting thing about Punitive. If they have so much money and there's a Vasher on their mode, they could just let us get in. So forcing them to res stuff is kind of nice. Let's see how deep we go, because the deeper we go, the more money we get. This is also clickless. No way. This has been so much value. <laughs> Back in the day, Eli. Boomer click brand? Yeah, we just don't have a boomer yet. I'm looking for a boomer. There's two and five. This is awesome. I think I remember Abram Job saying, if you ever pay for it to break Eli Corotor, you've lost the game. I don't know if that's relevant in startup, but back in the day, it kind of was a problem. What? What? This thing, we paid clicklessly for one credit. Oh my god. Do we trash this for three for three? I think we're throwing our money at their money. Yeah. Disgusting. Disgusting. So good. Love running in remote. New to the stream came from YouTube. Which deck are you running? Yo, Farmer, if you're watching on desktop, there's actually like a, a thing called Keyhole. It's a Twitch plugin. It's like right up there uh, under Eli's legs. That will show you the deck list. We're playing the deck list of the week right now, which is Sir Loathing's um, uh, Steve Cambridge deck. Welcome. Oh, man, that was dirty. That was dirty. It was seven credits and a run. I think we're going to just install the Lucky Charm. And throw out the Dawkins Pass. We got a legwork. We'll be fine. Many thanks. Of course. It's a good plugin. You can highlight any of the cards. You can click on the deck list. It'll take you to the deck list. It does everything. It knows your location. It sells out data for money. It does everything. <laughs> and this is kind of freaky too, right? Like in theory, if we have some like really aggressive play on HQ, they can't do anything unfair here on the remote. Like they can't depend on a mana garm. They can't depend on uh what's it called we haven't seen enough influence they still could be on one or two copies of uh uh anoetic void and the inside job for the remote server is going to be really key we're going to be on six points next turn so again if we top deck the the send a message that's it game over hopefully but this is going to be a close game for sure the thing is like we haven't seen anything else in their deck they have to install double advance advance and we haven't seen any seamless launches yet so uh, this turn we're going to try and poke hq too bad the list doesn't have any Tread Lightly. Oh my god, it'd be disgusting. And Tread Lightly is really good in Steve, uh, who can play it for free, let alone with this sort of package. Single Advance, we have to run that. We have to run that. If that is... Wait, there's no more... Um, what's the program trashing trap? That doesn't exist anymore, right? We just have to run this. I'm just going to inside job it. We've seen three Eli's. I don't, I don't know what we're scared of. Free inside job. So this will get us through one ice. And it'll force him to res stuff. So magnet, whatever. So it didn't actually do anything. Yeah, aggressive secretary, not in. Okay. On sell, that actually is pretty cheap for us to break, if I'm not mistaken. It's only four credits. It's as expensive to break this as an Eli. This looks really suspicious. I don't know what this is. Roto turret? Sick. That was a bad face check in the end of the game. We respected a road turret. We call that road turret. Vacheron. Okay. The question is, can we survive? And right now it's looking like, yeah, probably. If we top deck a class act, we also have full information on this remote server. Uh, we'll take the gamble. Do we survive this? Yeah. They'd have to triple punitive us. Can they triple punitive us? If we had a class act there, we'd feel good. But it was sure gamble and boomerang, so... I can't have goofed it. So our options here are run HQ and hope we win. I, I just don't see how we died a punitive. They'd have to do triple punitive. No, they have to do... No, yeah. And yeah, I feel like we just have way too much money. Because they have to do triple punitive, right? And two of them would have to hit. I don't think it's possible. Rip ag sex, so sad it's gone. I think I've landed one or two of them. It does feel really good. That's true. It does feel good. In this sort of format, not in standard. In standard, it's like, what, what, I'm an anarch. What do you want to do? You still need to wait four turns to win? They can still jam? Yeah, no, for sure. We're, we're not, we haven't won yet. Like, they're definitely going to jam before this ticks down. But, like, the window of us dying gets smaller. That's what I'm celebrating. Because if we survive this turn, it's another punitive turn we don't have to worry about. And then it's only the last fast run. So there's only two more agendas in the whole game. Six in R&D, five in hand. We've seen, I think, three punitives, so that's six influence, seven influence, eight influence. We saw a spin doctor, nine 
influence. Uh, 10 11 on the toll booth. So I'm not sure. They can't even puny once? Uh, sort of. It's not that they can't puny once. They could puny once, I think. I think they could. Like a big enough difference that I didn't do the math. <laughs> it could be wrong though. Because it's like they could do a single punitive, but they'd have to like bleed us on the first two, right? Like we basically punitive us, we have to spend to dodge it. Punitive us, we've spent to dodge it. And then the third one might sneak through. I think it's very unlikely that two of them sneak through though. But they, they have a chance of hitting us with a single punitive, I think. Because punitive favors them inherently because it is uh, trace three to five. So they're already up two credits. But the math is like something I've never been good at. That's why you always play psychographics. Uh, mid seasons into psychographics instead. What happened? They just trashed the outermost, which is the magnet. So it looks like they're installing something. Wait, what happened to the magnet? Huh? What happened to the magnet? Oh. Okay, so this is a spin doctor if I've ever seen one. Took Pino instead of playing one game and was left with two Ivan Worse in hand. Ooh. Force those last two reses to bring them the cash a bit just in case. These two? I don't want to I don't think they would ever res this one. Okay, so they they overwrote on this. So we just want to wait the game out. So we basically can play full control. We don't have to do aggro. If we can just make sure we have enough money to run this, which is not gonna be that difficult with career fair at liberate in hand. I will run the spin doctor though and force a shuffle here. Because even if they draw awkwardly here, we could consider just legworking HQ. It is a Nico campaign. We will definitely trash that. Then we'll go ahead and career fair this down, and then just smart smashing this button. Because now we definitely have comfortably the credit lead. We definitely want to be drawing every turn. We should have drawn that turn instead of hitting four, just so we have the value draw with class act. We know our deck is boomerang, class act, uh, gamble, I think it's boomerang, class act, gamble, the last three. But they have to figure this out in a couple turns. And again, they need two turns to score an agenda. So actually, it doesn't matter because we don't get two turns. They need one turn. Government, that's good. 2x? Yeah, I think it's a class act. I think we only have two class acts in the deck. But we definitely want to be drawing every turn. Yeah, it's a boomerang class act. And I think the last card now is sure gamble off the top. Which is probably just worth drawing here. Oh. This deck only has two sure. Oh, I removed a sure gamble from the game. Steve, good stuff. Uh, Legwork is getting juicier and juicier. I just don't feel like we have to do anything. We have 41 credits and they're only trying to score behind ice. And we have icebreakers and money. So, feels okay. Do I have to do double advance? Okay. Let's go. Single advance, double advance, there you go. They're running out of R&D too. Yeah, this is gonna end before <laughs> Vashon ends. I wonder if they have more spin doctors. We just haven't seen enough influence. So we're just gonna straight up inside job this. I don't think there's anything reason why we wouldn't. It's clickless as well. So if we have to run this back for some reason. We could have considered, I don't actually think we want a boomerang on sell. This is cheap enough. Oh, fantastic. Stacking sentries is kind of good against Bugalter, but uh, this is only four credits after refund. GG. I think they just have to jam faster. Or us not to respect Vashron. Uh, oh, you think? Oh, they conceded. GG. Ooh. That was a mean one. That was. Some hard money to keep up with. Where's the rest of your influence? More toll booths? 143 to 138 credits. Got them. Uh, just slightly more than them. But like, at this point, it was hard to get Steve's ability. And there's not that many matchups that will like triple ice HQ and double ice archives. Oh, they had a daily quest. That actually does make a lot of sense for this deck list. Uh, and they had a tear on this remote. Yikes. <laughs> we ran into that. It was so bad. Not a factor. What? Wow. You're etching remote. Is so good. Dang. Daily quest not a factor. And they're only on a single spin doctor, I think. 
which is pretty wild. And it kind of would have helped them there. So this thing is like what? Six, seven, eight, nine, seven after refund, four for this. That's a huge survey. That's wild. They also didn't send the message. This was good. 12 agenda points still can't win on another turn. I know. But they had to win this turn, which they can't. And we won't be punitive. So we would get the seven points. Vacheron's like such a strong agenda. The fact that it, it doesn't care. The, the one thing you can do against Vacheron, and this deck can't do it, is if you imp this. If you use a card that trashes a card you access, specifically, I think, imp or carnivore within startup, you throw this into archives to run archives. Then you don't have to deal with it. But like Criminal has nothing smart to deal with it. Um, I think even uh, that one neutral card from Ashes doesn't work with it. Stargate. Yeah, Stargate works well. That is also too. Hey, enjoy it. And promise well. Yeah, no, they were very, very pleasant. Bravado, great card. Oh, yeah, when we do Bravado server too. I think that threw him for a loop. That's good. Yo, I like this deck a lot. I think it's a, it's a cool deck. I think there are some changes I would make uh if we talk about them a bit um again huge shout out for loathing for posting the deck right on posting a write-up uh the buffer drive is probably necessary unfortunately um i'm not a big f the swift is actually way better than than it looked um maybe you want to put a second one over the prepaid voice pad maybe you just don't have enough run events i don't know seemed good i like this deck that's cool <laughs> brought a play was huge yeah no that's fun all right i think that's it for the deck of the week it's already 10 o'clock it was a long game that happens when they go down to the bottom of their deck. Uh, I wanted to do some deck building today. Oh, I forgot. I don't have deck slots. How's everyone doing today, by the way? If you're just tuning in at this point. Uh, we have 498 slots. So we're going to have to roll the wheel. I'm going to scroll down and stop at some point And we'll delete a deck. Hopefully we can explain why we did the deck first. Vampo Mopus. Okay. It is a vamp deck. Did you win? Yes, yes. We got to... Uh, we had... All the Vacherons and still only six points. Uh, we had Vamp and Magnum Opus, and that was the deck. I'm going to delete this. Post your profile link. I'll hammer some likes on your list. Yes. Uh, <laughs> how does that work? What's my profile link? Hold on. I can do this. I'm going to farm. I'm going to farm likes. This might be against the term of service. Vamp is just mid. The deck plays itself. Yeah. Dodge the tag. Such value. How's it going, Rongi, by the way? Um, author name. Good times, bad times. Okay, so you just want to like this list over and over again. I'm going to post this in chat. Thanks, Restream Bot. Just like anything. Get one of my old decks I published to like from three years ago. Get it onto the Never DB deck list of the week. That'd be sick. Um, the, the idea is that the more likes you get, the more slots you get. The more you engage with the community. And I've not been doing that good of a job. Apparently, I can't post that link on Twitch because of an internal error. Are you serious? Let me try again. It worked that time, sick. Rally Metropole Army. I ordered physical ashes cycle today. Excited to play some startup and meat space. Hell, heck yeah. I tuned it down a bit. Heck yeah. Yo, the fact that people are now playing tournaments in person and people are remembering how good this game is to play in your face with somebody else, with physical cards. I love cards. This is understated. But like, I've been playing other card games and just like, you know, that, that uh, really annoying shuffling where you click the cards and you constantly move your hand. 10 out of 10. Great stuff. I'm so excited to be playing in person. Not doing a good job engaging with the community. I should post more deck lists. It's true. Smashing those likes. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. Um, okay. So what I wanted to try out is I haven't tried Reality Plus in the standard card pool. Reality Plus, mind you, you're probably familiar with it in System Gateway. It says 40 uh, minimum deck size. It says whenever the runner takes a tag, or sorry, the first time the runner takes a tag, draw two cards or gain two credits. Your choice. It's a good ability. That's a lot of value in abstractly. 40 card decks are also pretty valuable because you can run very few agendas. And I want to play this in a very aggressive jamming way that is similar to a list that I really enjoyed out of uh, Asmari, not Asmari, out of Acme called, um, uh, called the Coyotes List. And I feel like I, I Googled this because I was like looking up what the last Coyotes List I could find out. Coyote Revenge was the name of one of these decks. And this is all the way back in 2018. And either I am way older than I remember because I feel like I played a Coyote deck on stream like, oh, maybe a year ago. Maybe a year ago. But apparently I'm wrong. Dug out MTG land so I can fit it with cards. I'm so broken. <laughs> oh, yo, Sans, what's up? R plus has been very good for me. What are you even playing, Jester? Because I want to play a list like this. And how this list works is it played Acme Consulting, which was good. It was just fine. It was really good with certain ice. And we're the same sort of ability. There's certain ice that are just better for us. The idea is that like our Thoth, not a Thoth, uh, please, not Thoth, uh, our Hydra? 
is a three credit res. I miss UCF. Yeah, that was a reason to play that deck, but then everyone played N'Golo and he felt bad. Well, like Hydra, in theory, if they face check into Hydra, it's a three credit res. What? They run into a Hydra, unexpecting it because nobody plays this. You res for 10, you need to have the upfront cash. You gain five off the second subroutine because they're tagged, and you gain two because they're tagged. Three credit Hydra. Why have we never seen this? Um, the other idea for the deck is that some of these would jam really fast. I played ones that would have um, what's called reversed uh, accounts. So you jam that aggressively into the remote. And this was a deck that ran high rotating news pretty aggressively. I feel like I might have played versions that had economic warfare, but the idea is that you can play hard hitting news on tempo. It's one credit card. You can draw cards with it. And the idea is that you aggressively jam. Oh, this deck does have reverse accounts. You aggressively jam behind some pretty good ice and then do something scary to them. So this deck also had Sea Source, which will play our modded version in public trial. Uh, and then we can always do um, uh, exchange of information. Why do we have Sea Source in this list? Why do we have Sea Source in this list? Why Sea Source in this list? To trash resources? Okay, anyways, I like this sort of deck. I'm excited to play it. So I want to find out the last one I played uh -oh, on Jinteki.net because I feel like it was kind of recently. I'm pretty sure. Coyote's deck in 2019. Okay, so this is the modern version of it, the most modern version. We can't run closed accounts anymore. We can't play IPO or C-Source, that's fine. We have two high-profile targets. We have a consulting visit to hunt for it. Let me move my face so you can see a bit more of the cards. Uh, our ice suite's going to be a bit different, but we have reversed accounts. That's great. Thanks, Phil. Uh, we have Daily Quest also to get a bit of a credit advantage early, which is fantastic. Our agenda suite, we actually can run fewer agendas. We might not want to. We might run five three-pointers and then like a couple one-pointers just to be able to have an exchange of information target, which is really nice in this deck. And we want to be as aggressive as possible. I think that's really important for this deck is that you're aggressive as possible because they will step out of line and then you hit them with that hard-hitting news on turn two that they might not expect. Uh, I'm pretty stoked for this. This deck actually ran self growth program as well, which is a really niche card that only existed because at the time there was one runner who was very constantly tagged that ran these resources that basically made them unkillable. So you'd play a card like this just to bounce their tech cards. They're like, don't do meat damage cards. And then you can, you could end them. Yeah. Liza hate. Yeah, exactly. You know what this is. Your Hitchcock deck has Hitchcock deck has like 69 likes now. Nice. Thank you. I want to see how quickly that, that number pulls up on the, we'll check after this to check if we have more deck slots. I just hacked the planet like the <laughs> deck list. There's no way this is legal. I appreciate it, but uh, I hope we're not in trouble. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. C source for nat naturally. What do you mean? C two X HPT is still four damage. That's true, it's true. And you gank them into the into the Hydra. Oh my God, it'd be sick if we can do that. They float one tag because then it's kill. Oh, that's true. It does help with the float one tag problem. Okay, let's try and modernize one list that I really... I don't know why I have this open. Oh, it's because Continentals. Like, fave them all. Thank you, thank you. Um, again, I'm just going to say this really quickly because we didn't do a proper news segment. Um, Nisei has Continental Championships starting in August. Um, I'm going to be involved in some extent, it looks like, to do commentary, which is sick. A lot of other people are going to be are. A lot of work goes into this behind the scenes. If you want to play Organized Play Netrunner again... Uh, this is a competitive event, very truly is a competitive event, but on top of that, it's really important to know when you play in a tournament with a lot of players and you're not a competitive player, you will get, maybe you'll lose your first round, maybe, but after that you'll be playing against all the other people that lost their first round, and with enough players, because these events are huge, you will start playing people in the most fair matchups you've ever played because you're playing in the biggest field you might have ever played. Get involved. Even if you don't think I will ever win at Continentals, if you think like, what am I doing at Continentals? I'm not a Continental champion. Doesn't matter. It's really, really fun. I highly recommend it. Nisei does a great job. Uh, there's fantastic prize support. I know that there were some issues with some prize support last year. Nisei made some comments about it today. I have no doubt they're going to do a better job of it, but that was with delivery. The prize support itself slaps. Like the prize support is really, really good. There's a lot of participation stuff. There'll be side events. It's all going to be streamed if you just want to watch it. Seriously, get involved in organized play. Uh, in person will be happening soon, but if you want to just play uh, this August online, it'll be awesome. Um, so do check that out. Also, if you want to be a judge, that's really cool. I'm, I'm a really big fan of that. <laughs> I'm all liked out. Okay, I can close this now. Um, let's modernize this deck. Okay, so let's start with uh, our agenda suite. So we want to play three pointers. The only options we have are Bologna, which is a really good card for our strategy anyways. And on top of that, what else do we have? I'm going to go collection standard build. Uh, what else do we got? We have, I never know where to put my face. It's always a problem wherever it goes. Uh, if we want to do exchange of information, we could consider playing a 15 minutes. 
that can be cute. We also could consider playing some amount of, um, actually, do you know what's pretty good as well sometimes? Oh, not really. Tomorrow's headline? Better citizen program? I don't even know what that one does. Doesn't work. It's not great, is it? Honestly, it's probably pretty rude. I don't know. It just never feels good. I've never seen anyone score one of these. I'm not going to be the change I want to see in the meta. And then the other ones we can play, we can play um, uh, as five threes. We can play send a message, which is okay. It's fine. We can also play um, uh, re-education, which is fine. Oh, wait, no, no. What's the other one? Degree mill. Degree mill is a bit better. Degree mill is annoying. Degree mill is legitimately annoying sometimes. That's good. Figuring out how to update decks post ban lists and rotations would be a great topic for a long vid. It's kind of difficult, but like basically all you want to do is be like, okay, this is the modern version of this, right? Like that's kind of what we're trying to do here, and we'll try and ex uh, examine that right now, okay? So that's in theory our agenda suite. We're actually running too many agendas. There's a chance we do want to run the 15 minutes just so that we have a scoring plan and we have an exchange of information target. Not foods. Foods I don't like. So check this out. This actually comes up a lot in conversation. And I might be wrong about this. Sometimes I get this wrong. But Global Food Initiative is a really, really, really powerful agenda. One of the most powerful in the game. And it says that it's worth one fewer agenda point in the runner score area. So this is a three-pointer for you, a two-pointer for them. So you're playing a game where instead of having 18 agenda points in your deck, you have 15. And they still have to score seven of them. That's good. That's really, really good. But the big difference between playing Global Foods with other three-pointers is you have to think of how many agendas do they need to win the game. Right? Like if they steal a Bologna and they steal a global food initiative, they still just need to steal one more agenda to win the game, right? It doesn't change anything unless they steal three global food initiatives. So that breakpoint doesn't matter. A good reason to play global food initiatives is through if you're running two-point agendas, because then they generally have to run, right? Like if we put Beals in here. They have to run, steal four of these, right? Because the global food is a two-pointer, then they have to steal like another global food, a Beal, and then another Beal. Yeah, Soul Mary, it just doesn't change the number of agendas to steal. Vader says I never played Fab. Would be interesting to hear what it's like from the perspective of a Netrunner player. Fab, fun game, awful distribution model. That's what Sad Stug says. I talked about Fab a couple months ago, a month ago, when I picked up the decks. Ah, let's talk about it after we do one game with this so we don't entirely derail it. But do please remind me about Fab because I've actually been dipping my foot a bit into Fab and my thoughts are a bit more nuanced since back then. Um, but it's interesting to talk about. That is for sure. I, I do think the distribution model isn't amazing. I don't like randomness, but... Anyways, do remind me after this one. I don't want to derail this too much, but uh, I would like to spend like, you know, 10 minutes talking about Fab. Fab's cool. All right. So we'll do Bologna. We'll do Degree Mill. And then we'll put a 15 minutes in here and see how we feel about this. The idea is why we want 15 minutes is because we'll be running a single copy of Exchange of Information. And Exchange of Information says we can swap the one pointer for their three pointer, putting them farther behind and us on the win. Is it a dudes versus dudes game? No. Technically, no. Technically, yes, but in play, no. It actually fixes a lot of the issues of like the dudes versus dudes, board state versus board state games. Oh man, we're getting derailed. It's not a board, that's one of the cool things about Fab. It's not a board state versus board state game, the way that things like magic are. The idea is that if you have a lot of, you know, dudes, monsters, dragons, whatever, flying angels, uh, that you're just crushing the other person out of the game and then until a board wipe happened, it is not like that. And that's one of my favorite parts about it. But we'll get back to that. Okay, what else do we want to do? We want to figure out how we're going to win the game, and we're going to do this on the back of a very strong operation package. Uh, one of the hardest things, it's like Tekken, but a card game. Ah, man, I'm getting derailed all the time. No, not exactly. There are games that actually mimic a fighting game a lot better. So you have games like Exceed. You have games like uh, Battlecon. I think there's a bunch more games that actually very accurately recreate what it feels like to do a fighting game. Uh, there's a lot of good games like that. These are the games that care about like what kind of speed your attack is, where it's coming from, guarding, feinting, grabbing, grappling, distance. There's so many games that mimic what a fighting game looks like. This is technically a fighting game as in one opponent against one opponent and you hit each other with swords or whatever, but it's not. It is not. Uh, it doesn't play like that. Yomi. Yeah. Yomi Terrence. Yeah. I think Yomi plays like that too. Uh, combo fighter to some extent. It's the dude venture, but all the decks are bitch work. Haley. <laughs> oh man. Yo, Sads. If you know about Fab, I was playing Fab for a bit and then I figured out what Wizard was and I'm like, what? They put Shaper in this? Wizard is so cool. Um, Wizard's the instant thing. It's Shaper. It's it's so cool. Um, honestly, like a dude bash for all the decks are pitchfork Haley is kind of accurate. It is kind of kind of it's kind of really neat. 
Um, we're not getting derailed. We're not. It's not happening. We're gonna play three hard inning news. If every deck is pitchfork, Haley. Uh, we're gonna play three hard inning news. This is our win condition. The idea is that they step over out of line. We get a bit of a credit uh, differential, and then we can murder them. The deck. It's called Flesh and Blood, Terrence. It's a it's a card game from New Zealand that came out like two years ago. That has been like. <sighs> that's been like a big talking point because it's running an organized tournament circus better to, than magic has been modernly. They just started to do like their pro circuit tour thing. It also has been huge in the speculative market because it is a game that does sell itself on random booster packs and random boxes full of booster packs. So there are cards that are worth, you know, singles that are worth like 200, $300. Uh, and then, you know, the majority of the game is 10 cent cards though, which is nice. You, you can build a good deck on 10 cent cards. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. I'm not going to say anything more about Flesh and Blood anymore until we talk about it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to look at the deck list on Jinteki.net and look at our win conditions here. I've got to keep moving my face. So we have two high-profile target as a win condition and a consulting visit attached to that, which I really like. We also have a digital rights management, which is a bit confusing. I'm not sure why we have that. Why do you reckon we have this? Just to be like super aggressive? That's kind of neat. I went to high school with James White. We used to play MTG together. That's it. That's my story. Oh, cool. With exchange, you might want a public trail. Uh, we'll definitely get a public trail in there for sure. We're going to replace the sea source with a public trail. Maybe even two. I feel like if they just lose two credits, like maybe we can get better single tag punishment in there. We'll be interested with it. But, but paying public trail for two credits is like a lot more manageable. Let's put two on there and then see how it goes. We'll also put hedge funds in. We don't have any IPO equivalent. So what do you play as an IPO equivalent? Like, do we just play... um? Well, hold on. We'll do high profile target. Oh, no. High profile uh, times two. We'll do consulting visit. We have to make sure we play enough Whalen cards. Actually, I think with this deck, I actually spent three influence on this card, if I'm not mistaken. I think, yeah, it legitimately spent influence on it. This deck had close to counts back in the day. What is the best single tag punishment? Archive memories. That's also a nice card in this list. I liked it a heck of a lot for single tag punishment. Uh, we're building standard right now, Sengren. DRM gives you the ability to rush early. Yeah. In Acme, it was a bit better. I don't know if we definitely need it. I've been in and out. No, no, no. It's cool. We're doing a standard right now. I'm not doing like Railgun, uh, other stuff. Okay, so we have high profile, high profile, consulting visit, exchange of information, hard eating news. Um, we want to do all the good stuff. So Rashida is really important. Um, daily quests. I don't know what ratios we used to run, th run these at. Daily quests is really important. And Geofront's really good because we want to be jamming aggressively. And this is a huge credit differential if they run. Because now we'll have more credits. They'll have fewer credits. And uh, they'll be ready to hard eating news. Um, I think we want reverse too. I just like jamming anything. Single tag punishment, the baseball bat. Retribution just doesn't do anything to our game plan, right? Like, this does nothing to our game plan. Our, we're not going to win because they don't have programs, right? And this only trashes what? Programs or hardware. So this really doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, the other option is Market Forces. And Market Forces is like the, the new version of closed accounts. But this will only make them lose three credits. And we'll gain three credits. So it's a six-credit swing abstractly. But like, see source into this doesn't feel good. Are there any plans, Mark asks, to add more cards to the minor runner factions? How's it going? Um... Technically, no, from my understanding. I, I, I don't think Nisei has plans right now. I don't know if they've stated publicly, but my guess is that they don't have plans to support the mini factions as of date. Um, I think they'd rather just have those rotate out eventually and then build their own mini factions. Uh, I think that's probably it, or have no mini factions. But for what it's worth, like any low influence card is considered a mini faction card to some extent, or every neutral card. So I feel like they did some really good stuff where they basically made mini faction cards without making mini faction cards, right? Like Dreamnet. It's a sunny card. It's an apex card. It's an atom card. It's so good in the mini factions, specifically with the digital subtype with um with apex and the link thing with sunny. So like I think that you'll see something more like this than you'll see a purple card in Sunny's faction. But I don't know. I don't think Nisei said specifically whether they wanted. To. I'd be surprised if they did. Unfortunately, I like the mini factions. Don't get me wrong. Uh, let's look at some ice real quick. We're all scattered. It's not a problem. So we want to do ice that tags. Generally, that's a good thing to do. Uh, so let's look at our options here. And we do have a lot of influence to spend. We've actually spent, no, we've spent all our influence. Never mind. We have no influence to spend. So things that give tags are nice. Turnpike is cute. It's like generally taxing. Trace five is, it's fine. We can consider this. Uh, toll booth as a big ice. I don't think we're going to need it, but it's a consideration. We have, uh, ping. It's probably good enough, right? Ping is a good enough card. 
We have Peeping Tom, Noonhan, Loot Box, Juba. IP Block is really nice. There's a lot of Amaku going on right now, and you actually can make this sometimes a Trace 5 and not lose any credits on it. Because if the Trace 5 goes through, you gain your two credits back. Uh, so this is kind of like making news NBN Reality Plus if you end up tracing into it. 1x Thoth. Thoth Whitest is, uh, I think, a terrible card, right? Like, look at Thoth. Uh, what does it do? The art is nice. It's unique. It costs seven, so it's already two more than a similar ice. Uh, what's it called? Um, Funhouse. And then the subroutines generally don't matter. Like, I can take a net damage. I can lose a credit. That's cheaper than tracing. These subroutines are terrible. It's, it's, it's worse than Funhouse. Uh, the sync I set? I don't know what you mean by that, Marked. I don't know what the sync I set is. <laughs> not see, not unique. It'd be a huge change. I love Hydra. I kind of want to play two Hydra. I'd be even considering playing three Hydra. I'd consider playing three Hydra. Gil, you ask, did you ever stream a Sunny deck in the modern meta? Not yet. Firstly, welcome. But we will next week. Because next week, we are going to be doing our fight night on Friday. And one of the German players brought uh i think a german from the the largely german team brought a sunny deck so we'll be trying to play all the fight night decks as much as possible next week on thursday so we'll hopefully play sunny next week but i haven't but she's honestly not bad people think she's a solid 1.5 i said with sync oh there's only two of those sync bre and there's only one it's only sync bre sync bre is also like not great the numbers don't are fantastic but trace four give the runner a tag like generally people just pay through this it's not the worst card, but it's not a card I'm excited to put in a deck. Like, generally, I don't know. If you play against 419, they break this for, like, four credits. It's not amazing. They have 419 has Link, mind you. Uh, Funhouse is a three of. I think we have to. Not that I'm excited about it. Uh, what else can we play in this list? Like, we want to kind of get some anything that's, like, really tempo positive for us. Because we want to be jamming and making a credit differential. Looking at the other list, we had very specific ice that worked well with Acme. So Data Raven is now Data Ward. Or, sorry, Data Raven is now Funhouse. Data Ward doesn't have an equivalent. Enigma is good. Just an end the run is good. This deck did run a Hydra. IP block. Slot Machine. Of course Slot Machine. Everyone Slot Machine. I think we can do an Enigma or two. Funhouse has never been amazing for me in R+. Solmere, I'm excited to figure that point out because I think you're right. I thought there were more. Which format is this deck? This is the standard. There's only two cards that start with Sync. Uh, it's Sync uh, BRE and then Sync. Uh, there's a lockdown. F2P. Oh, F2P is okay. F2P is not bad. It's positional. It's not bad. Maybe it's better than Turnpike. Hydra's pretty great for big eyes. I really like how it does go blank if they go tag me despite being based on tags. Hydra's really good. Again, we can res this sometimes for three credits. I'm just worried of putting three in, in our deck because we don't have a very strong early economy. Funhouse is data rain, but one stop closer to being Thoth. Exactly. <laughs> Sync rerouting. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, so this is right now 5, 10, 15 ice. Looking at the original list, we were on 16 ice. What could we put in here that's just good? Like, honestly, I'd consider putting a white space. Am I wild? Is it out of format? I don't think there's any other sync cards out of format. I think we have everything. I might be wrong. I think we have everything, though. Like, do we pay pop-up window? Like, what do we need? We have end the runs, pseudo end the run, F2P is okay, Hydra turn bike, ping. I feel like we could just have a big barrier. Maybe we just play a third ping. That's good enough. Okay, we're on 44 cards, which actually... Oh, I forgot we're a 44 card list. No planogram. Yeah, right? Like, I forgot that we're a smaller deck list, that we actually have to cut some of our fun stuff. I never... I'll be honest. I don't like playing 44 card lists because I generally have to cut up all the fun stuff I like putting in it. It's a bummer. It honestly bums me out sometimes. Hydra with spin price. Like, we don't even have spin doctor in here. Like, it just... Ah, oh, man. 44 card lists are so hard. Do you even put Spin Doctor? Yes, I think you 100% do. Because you can just gives you more hard-hitting newses. It gives you more Rashidas and NGOs. Yeah, you do. Funhouse joins the pile. Literally every ice is a code gate that we have these days, sort of. You can build a bigger deck. You can. And we have to play more agendas. And you know what, Kill? I like that. I think we're going to do that. We're going to build a 49. F it. You really hate the 40 card list? Diogene, your 40 card list really wind me up because there's no good reason why you want to do that. You haven't explained why you put that goal on it. I do agree that goals breed like, look, it's good to give yourself like challenges. Challenges breed creativity. If someone says like, okay, I'm going to make five decks using a single card pool, you get some interesting decks, that's for sure. But like the 40 card minimum, I just don't understand why that challenge is being prescribed. That frustrates me. Do we, we play Pantagram, right? Are we cutting 40? No, we're going to play 49. Yellow. 
I feel like we don't have enough um, single tag punishment that we do want to just play Planogram. What can we cut from this list, y'all? It's a design space that is really fun. I don't, that's, a, I don't get, I don't, I don't get why it's a fun design space. It's just, you are inherently building a, I would argue, always the worst deck. And if you just add four cards, it makes it better. Like, it's not a fun creative challenge. It's just like, okay, take, well, okay, I, I, see, I see what you mean, that it could be, but like, it's just like, take a deck and then take out the least bad four cards. Right? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't excite me. Planogram is actually really important because I don't think our deck has enough money. Let's see what this looks like. It's very consistent. I believe it, but also in some ways very inconsistent. Minus one NGO, minus one Planogram. I love NGO. Especially because we have so many things to jam. I don't know about that. If anything is public, the public trail. Uh, nah. Let's see what it draws like first. Opening hand, honestly pretty good. We have nothing to jam. Oh, now we do. So here we can do something really annoying. We could do Funhouse, Daily Quest, and we could put, honestly, ping on HQ in the early game. Okay. We'd have to res this. So we couldn't even res our Funhouse. Oh, man. That's such a bad difference. We would, we would we'd protect this with ping, I think. We would do ping Daily Quest. Just interrupted my Netrunner meetup to stop and say hi. Yo, Paul. Yo, you if, you, if you're if you meeting with Netrunner in person, you got to go do that. That's so cool. Uh, we're not allowed to do that, really. Um, I'm jealous. Are these even DQs going to survive? I think yes. But if they don't, I don't think we care. We only have th two Wayland cards. So if we played three Economic Warfare, and then we'd cut Archive Memories... Two Hydra in opener seems incredibly bad. In the opener, yes. But I think it's worth having two in the deck. The chance of you opening two is pretty, on, is pretty low. If we want to make sure we see one per game, it's fine to have two since you usually only have half two-thirds of your deck. HPT to boom? Oh, that's honestly f interesting. Yeah, that might be actually just be better. Why do we play HPT and not boom? We have archive memories. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I think you're onto something here. That gives us some influence to work up with. Yeah, Solom, I like that a lot. Problem is we don't have card slots. If we could spend influence on this deck, what would we add? And we have to add something that like takes another card slot, right? Like probably better ice, I reckon. Like what is better ice? I don't, we lost all the good ice. You're welcome to join us in Phoenix anytime virtual hug. Thank you, Paul. Enjoy your meetup. That's really cool. What does this deck need? Is there any card we're sleeping on? Neurospike? Honestly, like, if we played Neurospike, we would just swap Degree Mill in for the other one. For uh, re-education, we'd become Neurospike Void. Nah, I don't know. I think Economic Warfare times two. One, two, three, four. I feel okay about this. Now we have to cut two cards. Afshar. Afshar is good. What about other cards that give a tag? Like Mouseless, Snare. Mouseless is kind of cute. It gives a tag. It's annoying. Is there other weird off-brand ice that gives tags? The thing is, if we do this, that's like it eats all our influence really awkwardly. Afshar is not bad. Afshar is a pretty good ice, for sure. Snare is good, but unfortunately, like Snare kind of counters our win con. Like, we don't need the Snare damage. Snare only costs us two credits, though. Ooh, that feels really good. You get more influence if you get two more Wayland cards in. Well, we, but we spend two influence to get, we basically get one more influence, right? Because at minimum, we'll spend, well, no, not because we cut the Econs. But, uh, yeah, sort of. I played three Snare, yeah. So the idea with Snare is Snare kind of works a bit better with high profile target because they'll have fewer cards in hand. So they might be easier to like public trail HPT. But with Boom, it generally doesn't matter. Force Connection is also neat too. Force Connection is on Axis. It's like a Snare. Uh, but give the runner two tags. It's Trace three. So even if we spend Snare money, make this Trace seven, it's two tags. You know what? Whatever. No, we don't. We never tried this. Well, every time we'll pay four. Well, imagine as a Snare whenever this fires, we'll pay four. Surveyor? Surveyor's not a bad idea. I feel like with so much Boomerang and, and the other one that I don't love Surveyor anymore. We all fell off the Surveyor tra uh, uh, truck at the same time. Oh, slots though. Oh, slots. This is why we should only play 54 minimum card decks. This is not a good hand. 
Does Nisei format use the most wanted list or a ban list? It has a ban list, uh, Mark. You can find it on Nisei's website. If you go to uh, the top right under formats, it'll tell you it. Um, it'll be... Uh, there's a, a bunch of cards banned. They recently banned six more cards just earlier this month. One Boom 3 Econ Warfare. Um, does it work with influence? I feel like Econ Warfare is just going to be better for us than uh, Force Connection. Does it work? Yes. Do I want two Boom? I think so. Because consulting Boom is really difficult. It's really expensive. That being said, we do get a lot of card draw. Okay, let's cut two cards. Let's cut an NGO front. I think we cut a public trail. Do we cut a public trail? Instead of paying influence for top cards, straight up band? Yeah, it's a straight bands. There's a fair few cards banned at this point in time. We also could drop these one pointers. We're on Degree Mill and Quantum. Quantum is nice enough with Funhouse. Okay, cut one card, y'all. What do you think? How much do you need the archive with two boom and consulting spin? I don't think it's necessary. You might be right. It might not be necessary entirely. And then we could play one, two, three, four, five Wayland cards. I've been playing R plus more as a tempo deck, not trying to kill, but it makes it hard for the runner to contest the agendas. That's in startup though. Just to see this go. Cut one fun house. Oh, I feel like if we caught a fun house though, we need more ice. Five, ten, sixteen ice might not be enough, but maybe I'm wrong. End the run, end the run, end the run. No, sort of, no. So even our end the runs are limited. I wonder if we also just like Acme back in the day, you play like a single um, thimble rig just to set up your positional ice a bit better, but we don't have any like hard positional ice. Yikes, I don't know what to do. Minus one RA. RA is my favorite card on the list, I'll be honest. I'll be honest, it feels really good. Look at this opening hand here. We don't have enough money. We, I don't think we have enough econ. We have three hedge funds, two predictive programs, NGO Rashida. No, we don't have enough money. How do we add money? What's money? I don't want to play Hansei because we're a combo deck to some extent. Yeah, I think it's subsidy. I think we dropped the archive memories for subsidy, but then again, like slots, right? I feel like we we need three NGOs where she does. Like we have to jam so early. Like that's a problem. Is there any ice that's like really tempo positive in terms of like economy? Vera does. Beanstalk marked isn't in the format anymore. It's been replaced by predictive planogram. I'm not considering this, am I? No, I'm not. Cut daily quest? Ah, uh, yeah, I think you're right. We want to be jamming. So how do we spend two influence? How do we spend two influence? The idea is money. Oh, you're right. The idea is money. If they're interacting. But we have two influence floating. So if there's anything we could, like, directly just replace with something better. <laughs> 30 con warfare. So rude. Do we have to deal with Shaper? Do we have to have a way to deal with misdirection? Chrysium's Afshar. Afshar's still a good idea. Yeah, I think Afshar's fine. I like Afshar. Then we have to cut a slot. What happened to the daily quests? We cut them. I don't know how easily we're going to be able to defend them. I'd rather be jamming other stuff, I think, than having a daily quest on a remote server. I think that's true. That we'd rather just jam, like, a reverse NGO, Rashida, anything else on the remote server. Uh, it might be better if we built a second remote server, but we're a bit different with Acme. Where in Acme, a single ice can go really far. In our deck, it's not that obvious. Put a third boom in for free. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. Wait, actually? Yeah, I guess we can. Look at that. So hold on. We have one more influence. We made influence. Best defense. Yeah, but it doesn't work that well, right? Like they simul chip it. Two subsidies actually minus one influence. I, I kind of like the subsidy plan. Headline to use Psycho's alternate tag punishment. I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's better. That actually f solves a couple problems. So if we do tomorrow's headline, which is just really good in our ability, we can cut the public trail now because it doesn't work. We cut the exchange of information and then we can put a single psychographics in. I, I, I think that's a really good idea. <laughs> we still have one influence somehow. We keep gaining influence. Uh, what do we want for one influence? Oh, we still have too many cards. <sighs> Dang it. We can cut an IP block for an Eli. Is anybody excited about a single one influence ice in the format? Eli, maybe? 17 ice is overkill, 6, 12. Oh yeah, we do have a lot of ice, okay. Mm, it's probably Funhouse, but I'm not gonna do it. 
Okay, and now we can upgrade something to a one influence better version. Protein influence. They'll, they'll be counting. They'll be like, I, I, what's their last influence? Are they going to DJ Fenris us? Minus one. Yeah, minus one. I think I like that. If anybody can think of a way to spend one influence, I'm, I'm all ears. Yo, guys, we got 30 more slots. 20 more slots. 22 more slots. Yo, thank you. That's huge. After into mouseless. Oh, I do like that. I like that a lot. Leave a blank. Truce. Yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to that. Yeah, I think now we can get the mouse in. I think the mouse is sick. Uh, now we lost and end the run. Feels fine. Feels fine. Okay, so a couple things I have to do. I'm going to update this so you can look at how bad this deck list is on a keyhole if you're watching on Twitch. Just give me one second here. Yo, can I float a weird question? And I'm not genuinely thinking about this, but I wanted to ask this. Minus one if Funhouse into Enigma. You're probably right. I'm going to not do that yet. Okay, look. Right now, I stream on two channels. We stream on YouTube and we stream on Twitch. We have the numbers on this channel to like be affiliated on Twitch. So we get access to a lot of things like subscription model, uh, emotes, the whole community shebang. Like we have the ability to do that. We are hitting the minimum values necessary for that. But the problem is, if you enter that sort of program, you are not allowed uh, to, to have your content up on YouTube until 24 hours has passed. So I can no longer double stream to YouTube and Twitch if I want to pursue the Twitch affiliate program, partnership program. I don't know what it's actually called. So I'm asking as a question, I'm not considering this. I just wanted to know what y'all thought about it. But like for those who are watching on YouTube, if I didn't stream on YouTube and then I uploaded the VOD a day later, how bad is that? Would that be a problem? Would you be upset about that? You can be generally honest. Like I want to hear your feedback on that. Or would you just move to Twitch? Because it's an interesting question. Because we have, we have made it way too accessible. <laughs> We've done too good a job at this. Coyotes plus uh, NBN reality plus, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only situation. If we want to play Twitch's game, we can do that. Take the money and run. <laughs> yeah, it's an unfortunate thing. I prefer live and it would move to Twitch. Madragon, thank you. Thanks for your feedback. Also, how's it going? I have no doubt live is way better and like I'm so glad to be able to stream on most channels and like sometimes there's more people watching on YouTube like it's, it's actually pretty evenly split um so I'd wait for the VOD okay cool I like watching live on YouTube but I don't get watched live as often as I get to watch live as often as I like okay not bad I thought COVID and Project Nisei oh no man COVID strengthened them in some ways Twitch is fine especially if they started to make you more money I just catch the VOD Z Zeddy how's it going welcome Cool. If you're watching this also on the VOD in YouTube, let me know how that impacts you. It's something that like it's interesting to consider, but it feels so, so bad to close a door on like a viewership of people who like, you know, spend the time to hang out. It just feels awful. So I don't know if I'm going to do it. It's not going to be a lot of money anyways. It's just like we can do more on Twitch with like community stuff. I don't know how much money you make off subscriptions. None of this stuff is monetized, mind you. Come to think of it, I feel never got a whole new set of ideas from recent events. The Neovit cycle. I don't know what you're talking about, Mark. What's the Neovit cycle? If it's not a problem, it'd be super flexible for some of us. To make an informed decision, I think we have to hear all your current Metropole Grid emote. <laughs> oh man, Robochola. Okay. I'd watch the old VODs on YouTube, but the live Twitch experience is great. Yeah. Oh wow, okay, Reyna. We're going to pay six for our, our, our stupid fun houses. All right, opening hand. Not good. Uh, Reyna generally trashes ice, forces d reses, so some of our cheap ice is going to go pretty far. She does have a link, which is actually really good in the matchup. I think we have uh, one, two, maybe three ice that trace on it. It's going to be a lot for Hydra, and she's going to d res the Hydra. Hopefully we res it for only three credits in full. I'm going to mulligan this hand. It's way too many agendas. Android version of COVID, but in the far future? I've watched them both, but I don't really care either way. I usually don't catch you live, and 24 hours for the VOD isn't a big deal. Yo, Zik, I don't know how to say that. Zikeksukuf? Thank you. Welcome, by the way. It's really cool. There's a lot of people who are just piping up. I'm not familiar with y'all names. To make oh, excuse me. At least you'll need to post an announcement on YouTube when you're streaming on Twitch. Uh, sorry, Dove. I don't know if you can do that. I guess you can. I would have to do, like, Twitter and other social platforms or Discord. All right. What are we doing here? We're definitely going to open up the money. I think we want to jam the Rashida. 
I'm worried if we keep HQ open, they could diversion of funds us. I'm forgetting that we're not playing in startup. Generally, you see Reyna in startup. I want to get the Rashida going. Do we want to do it behind the mouse list? They're going to make us spend six on this and then the run is going to feel garbage. Hard countered. Hydra now cost you four. <laughs> Might make it unplayable. Oh no! It's a billion dollars! Xanadu? Xanadu. Am I going to res this for seven credits? You're damn right I'm going to. It doesn't do anything on face check anyways. Joke's on you. Don't feel bad about it. I would watch late content on YouTube for sure. I just never seem to make it to Twitch even though I try. Oh, appreciate it, Steven. I don't mind downloading another app and sometimes it takes a few days to split. Finish your VOD. I can't wait. I can wait 24 hours. Do you, man? Thank you. They trashed a spin doctor. I think we only have two of those. We, we stabilized a wee bit. We're going to be far away from the government subsidy. That's worth keeping in mind the way we play. And we have to make sure that forge activation never absolutely destroys us. So we're going to try and keep a bit more money than we might think we need. Like we're going to play a bit slow because I'll be honest, Reina's ability, not very good. Reina's game plan, not very strong. So a lot of times you just want to play slow so you don't overextend and then she blows you out with like a forge activation to on pissant into emergency shutdown into some nonsense. You still can monetize more. I watch them both and wouldn't mind you fought on YouTube. I'm all for supporting you. Thank you, Truce. Oh, did you say hard hitting news? Uh, yeah, I probably should have there. Was not considering it. I was just talking about how Reina is not good. <laughs> Do we want to spend four on this? No. If the one card in hands on Passant, that's fine. Yeah, I think you're right, Rangi. News would have been sick there. If top deck a hedge fund, we're really good because then we can get out of the government subsidy. But I think now we just click for three credits. I think we do just click for three credits. This is where I'd love to have more things to jam, like Rashida's NGOs reversed. Not reversed as much. But I'd love to jam here. Am I going to archive this one up? we got to throw something out. I might as well. And we just want to hold on so we can get a subsidy. Is this against a player in AI? No, definitely a player. The robo name is, is just, uh, just to fool you. This is annoying, I'll be honest. <laughs> now that we're playing Toth. All right, deuces. Gain three, draw two. So much for our money. Hopefully we draw planogram sometime soon. IP block doesn't seem amazing against Reyna. I'm just going to click three again. So they're drawing, drawing. They didn't draw for the first turn. They kept one card in hand for a really long time. That's too forged out. So hopefully again, we have a hedge fund. They threw at that. Did we just jam this? Ugh. Like, are they going to, like, yeah, that's fine. Are they going to, uh, it might be the sort of deck to play, um, what's that one with Hushiko on it? Fermenter. Ooh, that's slow. Okay. Canoe's only one more forge before she liberates them back in. I think her plan was, oh, we have hedge fund. We're out of the woods. I think she was, oh, three gambles out. Um, uh, I think she was going to buffer drive them in. I don't know. So here we want to do hedge fund into government for sure. Advancing this once doesn't matter, so I think we can just take a credit. Like, we're just going to try to play a bit slower than normal, but we're very happy to be on 17. Runner's richer than the corp. It's always surprised me how much money Runner has at times. So, well, if you don't force them to do anything like we are not now, they will have more money than you. Yo, Kat, how's it going? It's, it's going good. We're trying out Reality Plus in Standard, which is the first time for us. How are you? Orchestra in the bin. Breaks us for three credits. Feels good. Uh, I'm going to put this on the remote. Okay. Climactic Showdown. Yeah. Like this deck could Climactic Showdown and I wouldn't be 100% surprised. I'd be like 30% surprised. Oh, Tranquilizer. Honor Funhouse? Whatever. We're never going to res this card. Again. Just like you do, it does pay you off if they run. And they're just setting up. They are respecting our threat. <laughs> they're going to have a billion credits in Vamp Us. All right. At least this is credit positive. Hey, Andre, late to the party. Hope you're doing well. Yo, Frank, I'm doing good. How are you doing? How's your end of the world changed now with uh, the changes we've having here? Fermenter pop for eight. Feels good. 15 credits. Paper clips down. Let's go. It's an IP block. Am I resing it for four to cost them three? Gotta make them spend somehow. I've never seen the card CS in the wild. I have never seen it in the wild. I've seen it on JNet, though. Maybe I'm being pedantic. <laughs> we also don't have that many gens in the deck. We're holding on to a bunch of them. Uh, I wonder if they're ever going to go through this. The kid on the way. Things will change. Congrats. Fight Club is... <laughs> 
no cat it's next week so cat's gonna be joining us to do some commentary on fight club uh which is the ongoing event and uh last week's was vespers and cat panic messaged me like what are we doing for the stream i was like it's on the 23rd i don't know if you're joking oh you were not joking uh oh uh it's you're still working okay it's uh yeah it's on the 23rd it'll be next friday cat i think we're just gonna do economic warfare to throw the book at them the schedule's a mess okay hopefully you got a good project Five for three scoring windows hard to open up. It is. We got one though. I think we're just gonna do credit econ economic warfare into this because if this lands, like it's so much cheaper when we get two credits back. We even consider drawing, so we have to boost two. They can, they can't really clear all the tags. They can clear most of the tags because they're gonna get four off of this. Econ warfare hard hitting news is so dirty, especially when we don't pay a lot for it. But like now, their economy is a bit gutted, so this is another window. Admittedly, though, I need to keep eleven for this thing. I'm worried they're gonna inside job us. Okay. If this hits, we win the game. On the spot. There'll be streamers and everything. That we can trash the dude. It's probably not worth it. F for sure, you think? Yeah, maybe that turn because they weren't doing anything, but they have another one in their deck. <laughs> or not. It's happened. They have an MK Ultra. Uh oh. I didn't realize how bad this is if we do res this. If we res this for 12 credits, it's all our money. Thinking. Wait, how do they have 11 credits? Oh, because of Fermenter. Oh, man. I thought we had a window. No, we'll just give them the tomorrow's headline. We'll gain two. That's another tag for them to clear. Okay. Oh, I wish we had a hard hitting news. I shouldn't have snap played this. How much is this? They install their fry, their killer for two. Overclock. Okay, cool. I'm okay with this. Okay. They trashed an NGO front. That'd be a sick draw. We have one NGO front, two NGO fronts out, one Rashida out, one spin. But this can sap a lot of their money. They've played a knife Edwards. A liberated count is down. Oh, are they sniping us? That's perfectly played. The game that ice is dripping in flavor. It is really good. Man, this is where you play. If we had public trail into this thing, oh man, it would be beautiful. I don't have a play here now because this thing's taking up the remote. Wait, they refused to steal this? Oh no, they trashed an NGO front and saw the psychic graphics. That's good. Now, this thing is just so good against. Do we ever play this? We rest it for six? Oh man, any deck that just doesn't have enough money. Reyna. Selling Liberty there's just asking to die, TBH. I know, that's actually really bad to Harding News. It's really bad to Public Trail. I, you shouldn't have done that for sure. Um so it worked out for them because it played around this, but um, that's yeah, it's not a good thing to do there. Sixteen, okay, all right, perfect. So we res this for twelve. If we res this for twelve, they install this for two. They have to boost to three strength, to five strength to seven strength, and then to nine strength. Or we'll save two credits. I'm gonna res it, that's a mistake. We'll get E shut down, and we'll concede. But uh, I just wanna res this. All right, two to install. Scorchers, but only works if the runner has exactly one tag? How much damage is it gonna do? 12 credits, they broke all of it. And now they can't trash this. <laughs> Got him. Not that they have money. Oh no. Oh, that's a good top deck. Oh, that is the perfect top deck. Don't mind if I do. And we'll be on three credits. And they can't go through the IP block. Well, they have to break it. Ooh, that was good. Four damage. Oh, we win. We exactly win. Credit perfect win. Ooh, good game. That was some good pressure. 
Plus, sure, I can afford to res anything. Heart of the cards, yeah, damn, we got lucky there. We top deck exactly into the heart into the Harding news, which ended us on three, and boom is specifically a double. Scorch Earth is banned in this format? Yeah, Scorch Earth. Well, it's not banned, it's rotated. Uh, 64 to the 85 credits. Okay, so we kind of did what we wanted to do. Our ice was taxing. Admittedly, if we could res a bit cheaper, we'd be gone a bit further, but uh, it's, it's looking like it's doing its thing. Yeah, so there's a lot of cards in Netrunner, but a lot of the older cards, the stuff that came out like a decade ago almost, a lot of that stuff is rotated, not banned. So it's not tournament legal, but for other reasons, because they want to make the card pool, you know, approachable and easier to balance if it's smaller. Our ability fired what? Twice? Gain four credits. Fine, I guess. It changes how they play too to some extent. We'll talk about flesh and blood after this one. Track eight was spectating that game. They know all their tricks. They figured the deck out. We're in trouble. Ass also has link. You gain two credits at the perfect time. Yeah, no, no, we nailed it there. This is as, so we have to watch out for HQ pressure. Our opening hand, two agendas. I think that's a bit high for what we'd expect. Uh, I'm going to mull this. I want an end the run ice for HQ. That's eh, not better, is it? The first time I'll never run a DB is the band symbol. I'm not actually sure. Wait, uh, what are you talking about specifically? All right. Best of luck. Have fun. So as is actually, I think, someone more likely to be running some sort of tech. Um, I don't know if there's any connections that prevent damage. Maybe Guru that sometimes shows up. Uh, at least if they're tagged, we can trash it. Uh, I think we can get diversion really bad here, so I want to ice up HQ with Funhouse, and then just probably click two. And then we want an ice on the remote to jam Rashida, but we have to watch out for Boomerang, and we have to watch out for Inside Job, so... We want to do something aggressive in hand while we have Economic Warfare into Harding News. On the Netrun DB app when looking at the card list? Oh, I don't know what the app looks like on a phone. <laughs> hey, you don't sell yourself short. Yourself short. I might be wrecked. I think they could have a good matchup for this. Gamble. Starting up on nine. Again, they want to install a hardware. Okay. This doesn't do much. This card I don't like. It does so little. Do we pop a funhouse here? I think we let them get the access here because we want to get closer to the government subsidy. If we res this, we're down in the toilet. So I'm going to let them in, unfortunately. This card does so little, it's so narrow, it's a card being accessed, so it literally does nothing in our deck, it only fires against things like Snare, uh, and it also, yeah, it doesn't do ice, like, it, it's so, so infuriatingly narrow. Oh, they stole a Bologna, that's a bummer. Beans. That was the, I think the second best hit, the best hit might have just been Rashida there. That being said, it did rob them of some tempo. Okay, we're going to draw once. Not what we wanted. I think we'll do with the remote. If they boomerang this, at least it is taxing enough. And we do have a set up hand as long as we draw into one of our head hitting newses or even a consulting visit sometimes. So we have one in 10 chance to draw something. It's a bit better, obviously, with Rashida drawing three cards or four, technically. Oh, no. No. Oof. Oof. We're on game point. Okay, so how many agendas left in the deck? This list has only seven agendas. So there's only five and 40, so one and eight. Lucky me. I clear the tag. Oh, they're going for it. They have the Bologna credits. No, we're safe. Good. And ooh, T400. Okay, another really low tempo card, but uh, this doesn't help them against Boom until they play like three of them. We got the Rashida. We have a huge credit differential. We didn't draw the hard hitting news yet. We could right here. I'm actually going to start with this thing. No, that's too many cards in hand. I think I'm just going to ice up a wee bit. And then we can get this down and hopefully something bad happens. I want to end the run on R&D. Like I'm actually really worried about it. Because they went off of like a maker's eye or something cheesy. So I kind of want to end the run here. Maybe we can't afford that. FTP. Do fun has FTP on the remote. I mean, on R&D. We'll keep this for the remote server. And I'll put this in the remote. If they, like, inside job it or boomerang it, it'll be a huge uh, credit swing. Because they still probably have to trash that. And then, hopefully, we draw into a hard hitting news. Again, we can always draw off of the fun house. If it triggers off of a boomerang. 
yeah, these cards are not doing anything right now. But they installed them for like free and for one credit. So at least feels better, but like they're such low tempo cards. Now, as is Masterwork, the hand itself is a really good console if you're installing these like low tempo pieces of hardware because it lets you draw a card the first time a turn. So it makes these cards a bit more playable. I wouldn't be surprised to see a flip switch, which is going to be a bummer for a Hydra. Okay. So I'm going to go this on the remote. I'm going to hit this button. And I'm going to advance this once. And again, some players here, because they think they're on game point, or because they are on game point, will kind of tilt for this. Other players would be like, okay, I can play control. Uh, ooh, red team. Okay, so they're going to be interacting. That's a nice place for the red team on archives, for the mouse list. It's just annoying enough. So they're probably not going to make too much of a profit off of this. And they also did run. So if we draw into something awful. Interestingly enough, like public trial, <laughs> say them both wrong, uh, would honestly be fine in this matchup so far. Oh, okay. Here's a fun house. I don't think they're going to take the tag. Just way too much value for us. Ends the run. Yeah, that's about right. How are they going to poke R&D on four credits? We could have hydrated them there. Oh man, it have been so good. Okay, we can rob all of their money. It's not very helpful. This also is a blank card. Michael, how's it going? Or Michal, you late for the stream? That's, we're still going. You're not too late. Uh, okay. We definitely want to get something here. I'm going to open up with the Spin Doctor because I want to get something on archives so we're not just bleeding value. Oh, that's annoying. I was busy playing Neverrunner with Wife. Good excuse. Yo, what are you guys playing? I think we'll do archives here. And I don't know if we have to advance this once more. I think we'll just click for credit. We're at a point where we should be jamming for agendas, but the problem is if they inside job this, it doesn't do anything. We just need a hard thing. These bad. We're consulting. Just four and 32. I wish I could get my partner to play. They don't want to play at all. How? Oh, the game is so fun. Do you have the guest today, creator of Blame Changer? I didn't. We had to move it for scheduling reasons. Um, should be next week. But apologies that uh, there was something that was advertised that fell through twice in a row now. We're going to fire these subs here. So they can prevent. They can't prevent damage. No. No recon drone. That's from a card being accessed. Don't try. I'm going to draw two cards. I want the. I want so bad. Uh, we gain a credit, they took a tag, we gain two cards, such value. It's my wife's favorite game, she hates magic. Nice. There's a lot of things that I think players who might not like magic could find here. So here we can actually return the red team, that seems bad. I will rest the turnpike. Our money is going quickly away. But this will actually, it's first time? Yeah, not ah, beans. Let's see if they pay into this. I'm not going to boost. Five is enough. And heck, if they even just goof it and take enough tags here, we just have to make sure we keep four credits for the boom. I don't know if they can spend four credits to dodge this tag here. It's technically similar to clearing it for uh, for clicking two. They're taking it. Okay, so if I res this, we're going to be on no money, which is a problem. But they'll be on three tags. Yo, chat, do we arrest this? I'd like to be able to end them next turn. If they get this in, they'll be on nine credits. They'll clear two. No, I don't think we arrest this. We could lose here. They have Bologna money, which is a bummer. But there's no way to stop that. Okay. They trash Rashida. Dang. Clear one tag. Clear two tags. Respect. <sighs> okay. No more money. We'll do, I think we just do install events on the NGO front. Or no, I think we do Rashida. <laughs> I wish. I think we do Rashida and save everyone. We probably actually should have just trashed that card and then played Economic Warfare. Maybe that's wrong. Oh, we have a spin doctor. I forgot we can just throw out agendas. Oh my god. What am I doing? Ow. Alright, so they have no money. There's no really easy way for them to red team. 
Play Game Net versus Steve. Start up. That actually does sound like a fun matchup. Steve can get free triggers or like easy triggers usually against Game Net. That does sound fun. There's a lot of like decision making with that matchup. I like that a lot in Steve's design. All right. So they haven't ran. All right. Okay. Now we have what we want. We believe. So we haven't got diversioned yet. We have Enigma to Funhouse, which is good enough. This is good enough. This is good enough, abstractly. Okay, so what are we throwing out here? This is honestly not that good because of the link, and I think we can get rid of one NGO front. I think we need to have to double advance cards for them to actually be scared. And like, I don't know what our win plan is. Like, we re they really have to step out of line to get hit by the hardening news because we have such a long route to us scoring out agendas. And Bologna is going to be really important because their economy is not very robust. We can only play Economic Warfare if they've ran. So another Recon Drone. This card doesn't do anything in the matchup. It's like straight up blank. Ugh. I think we do advance hedge fund install. Like, I don't know what we're doing here. I think we have to draw first. It's not much better. I'm just worried about like a rogue maker's eye. I think that's better than throwing a card out. The advancement here isn't worth that much. It might can make them consider running because it looks like a 5 3 agenda. They've shown no breakers to their name. Class act is going to help that a bit. So they could do boomerang inside job here, but it's unlikely for them to do all that and have Bologna money. So I'm hoping to Bologna soon. We have two and 22. Beans. I don't want to pop this and shuffle back in. No, we can pop this to shuffle other cards back in and then get the second one on the table. So we'll get Rashida. And... Reversed in, I think? No, probably another. Yeah, okay. No Bologna. No Bologna. Seven cards. So we probably just install both of these. Put one thing on HQ. It makes it look like they want to run it. Uh oh. That's probably wrong. I kind of like this better here because the the this works well. On R and D, this works with F two P a bit better. I just wish we were jamming game. This is why we had digital rights management in the original deck list. I don't think it was our deck list, by the way. So now they have a lot of cards in hand, but not a lot of money. So tech writer, okay, that may make more makes a bit more sense here with all the hardware. They have only played one gamble, one bravado. And it honestly looks like sometimes they they have to play around here. Um, what's it called? Whoa. Uh, playing around um, a reversed accounts. Oh, that's a problem. But their money's not that good. We'll be fine. No Bologna. Bologna. So what do we do with this hand? I think we just do advance government subsidy. And then we throw out an NGO, I think. Yo, Scrub, how's it going? We love that combo. We played Ken versus Blame Changer Standard last week. It was only fun for the first two times. <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, like deck's really good. And I don't think Criminal's that well suited against it. I think you really need things like Imp, Stargate, some Anarch stuff to help. Shaper is, is also a bit of a better matchup with Clot. All right, five credits. We have to score three three-point agendas. Anything spicy? We've been trying out Reality Plus. Unfortunately, we're just not playing Netrunner. Like, we're not jamming, so they're setting up. Uh, luckily, their setup seems a bit slow. We haven't even seen Breakers yet. But that's what we've been doing. We played the decklist the week earlier, which has been pretty good. Another T400. They're going to get to the point where we can't boom them. All right. I think on three T400s, if we can't boom them because they have eight cards in hand, I'm going to lose my mind. Never seen that. The only damage protection is startup. 
Oh, this is almost a startup legal deck. I guess Tech Rider and Recon Drone. Man, Flip Switch would be way better in this matchup. If this was Flip Switch, they could just like face check anything. They clear the tag clicklessly. <laughs> value boom. Boom, biotic boom. Yeah, we value boom them for sure. But they need to get a credit lead for no one home to be relevant. The second mantle. Are they on stealth breakers? You only need seven in hand to be immune to boom though. Oh, you're right. They are immune to boom. No, you're totally true. T400 boom denial is the new heartbeat boom denial. So listen, you want to play three of these in your deck. Favorite boom, rocket tracking a recon drone home to the runner would be so nice. Yeah, they're on the stealth list. Dang. Is that a problem? Okay, so they're on after image for sure. They might be on penumbral. Uh, might also be on whatever that, that multi-ax card is. I never remember the name. Uh, what is it called? It's named after a city. Like a lost city, right? What's that one called? With the safe on it? Safe crack or something? No, that's am I making it up? I mean Moo safe cracker, yeah, thank you. Parallel. Yeah, they could be on that. But like this is so slow. Like if we just drew more agendas, unfortunately, like okay, look, we have two more agendas and 17 cards because we buried two of them. Oh man, re-education would actually be good against this hand size. But we don't want to re-educate our hand. As soon as they run, I think they're dead. So they just need to really figure out when to run on the remote server. And I don't love jamming the reversed accounts because they're not going to have like a huge influx of money. See, also, they'll probably put down a Penrose at some point. They're just clicking for credits. Yes, I don't know what's happening anymore. Okay, well, they, they definitely are not going to be aggressively attacking us. They are playing a bit more solitary, and the Baba Yaga is going to demand a bit more solitary. We just need to find an agenda. I think we should shuffle with Spin Doctor next turn. Okay, well, not doing anything this turn, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I honestly don't know if we need two Economic Warfare. Overheard in Metro Grid Twitch streams, he got me. Andre said off track A's <laughs> the score over him. That track A boomed me. Andre added, he's so good repeating it four times. Andre then said he wanted to add track A to the list of players he matched up with. A, what you, I'm not sure I follow. Did you end up doing guest cast with author blame changer? I was looking forward to that. No, we got to push that to next week. He uh, couldn't make it tonight until like much later in the evening. So we just said we'd try for next week. Tycoon. Okay. Good strength, I guess. Is that the second Bobby Yaga in two weeks? It has been. We actually seen this one hopefully do a thing. I told you the bat was the right choice. Oh my god, you're right. The bat would have been disgusting in this matchup. But they need to run for a public trail, so so so. Retribution, like trash of the Yaga and all the horses it rode in on. Okay, so they have five credits here. So they have like seven credits. Uh we're gonna unless we Oh, I meant to draw an agenda there. Oh, Beans. I was meant to shuffle this. So now we'll commit to the bad line. Okay. So again, digital rights management seems a bit good. We'll advance this once. Am I worried about R&D? Not really. Ugh, this is so bad. Like we're doing equally, uh, they're at least building a board state. We're doing nothing. Draw, click for credit, advance a card that's not going to matter. There's a boomerang. Okay, at least they're going to inter interact now. So they have a big chance of losing as soon as they interact. And they are going to run. So they're probably going to lose because they ran. Here's an IP block. They're running with no money. Uh, do we draw two cards? I honestly don't think we draw two cards here. Because I don't want to draw into agendas and then they win. Wait, why don't they boomerang that? Oh. It's NBA pasta, not it's funny if you don't get the reference. I don't think I get the reference. 
Baba Yaga. Oh, right, 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 right. AI, thank you. Thanks, Jack Made. It's huge. We planned that. We planned that. Okay, so now they took an AI. So this is an AI, right? Oh, beans. So they lost one boomerang. IP block. Yeah, huge. Thank you. Um, so now they have seven cards. They have to clear a tag. So like we just do economic warfare into hard hitting news. And then they have one turn to not lose. So they ran. And that's how they're going to lose the game. Because we weren't scoring agendas. All they had to do was not run, unfortunately. You got a successful run? Uh, no. Yes. So, excuse me. We'll reverse to cancel. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, it is. Hard hitting news isn't. Public trial is. Okay. I didn't plan that well. Oh, that's a bummer. Andre, please start selling Metropol Grid merch. Namely, Mug This Has Beans on it. I don't know. <sighs> text based merch. Would I wear text based merch? Me, probably not. I gotta figure out how to rectify that because the brand is just text at this point. So, NP, tell me about it. We gotta maybe trace this one twice. They can also draw two and laugh. Beans is being Twitch emote. Beans would be a Twitch emote, that's for sure. Uh, we'll just get the money. So they could win. Can they clear four tags? No. <laughs> coffee mug, that's pretty good. Beans on a coffee mug? I called my mom today, and she talked on the phone about like three minutes of how excited she was for this one beans meal. My family's really into beans. My mother's side of the family's really into beans. I'm really into beans for what it's worth. I recently found a store that sells pasul, which is like a Serbian baked beans dish. I'm so stoked to eat it. I haven't eaten it yet. Remove one tag. Oh, not going to go far enough. Wait, value boom? Uh, yeah, we value boom. Wait, what can they prevent the damage? Go, red team. Go after image. So they have no breakers. We... <laughs> They lost their uh, their their tapworm. They lost unity. They lost their afterimage. They literally have no breakers. So can they clear all the tags? Maybe. Am I gonna put this in server one and lose on an HQ axis? Maybe. I would like a match ball grid mason jar for my water. Yo, it's good. It's really good. But the point of mason jars is you gotta recycle them. So it's gonna make me. I'll draw the mug as the boom card saying beans. This is when they docklands rip deal their breakers back. Oh man, rip deal still in the in in. You can still rip deal people, huh? Am I gonna have to double boom them? They can clear tags. They just, they don't have to get double boomed here. I also don't know why I jammed Rashida. I should have actually jammed this. It's safer in the remote. You gotta clear two tags here, track. You can do it. I just don't see how they do breakers anymore though. No, they didn't clear two tags. No. Okay, so this is a huge thing in standard. There's like two big meat damage cards. One of them cares if you have exactly two tags uh, or two or more, excuse me. The other one cares how many tags you have for the much damage. And we've already shown that we are on one boom. So you can kind of assume we might be on two boom. Maybe. If they cleared the tags, well, it's just a single tag. They would have been fine. We'd actually have to score out. <laughs> GG. I don't think I've had to double boom someone in forever. Thanks, you too. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a bummer, like, the fact that they ran. But, like, I think you can assume that we had two booms in hand, considering that we were doing nothing on the board today, right? Like, we weren't doing nothing. No, his home is why it pauses there. It shouldn't, though. It's only net damage. Like, net damage and tags. I think it pauses because of Recon Drone. I think Recon Drone is not coded properly. I think Recon Drone doesn't realize it's only access damage, but nobody cares because nobody plays Recon Drone. Like, nobody's noticed. I don't think it's no one home. Because it's only tags and net, right? <sighs> I love how you had to clarify <laughs> Eternal Love for Beans. It's, it's a big thing. Okay, um, we're going to play one more game of this deck, but I wanted to take a minute to talk about Flesh and Blood. It's something we talked about before, and there's a lot of people in chat chatting about it before because it's an interesting card game, and I got into it. Uh, give me one second. I'll, I'm going to get a physical prop. I'll get more physical props, one second.
All right. Two booms in this room. Hey, oh. Um, okay, I'm just going to do this real quick. All right. Uh, Flesh and Blood's a card game that came out in 2018 or 2019. I think it's 2019. It's made by a company called Legend Story Studios. It's kind of a big deal now to some extent. We'll do Flesh and Blood. I think it's fleshandbloodtcg.com or something. I want to use no one home for the tags. Did not realize. Yes. Sorry. Um, and it's a card game that came out, made by the studio New Zealand, and it's doing really well in New Zealand, uh, specifically because they had a better time with, than most of the world, comparatively, when it came to lockdown. So there's a lot more in-person play sooner than later. From my understanding that this game is more popular in card stores across New Zealand than Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, any of the other card games that take the similar place. Flesh and Blood is a trading card game, so it does come with random boosters. You buy a booster, you open it, you get 15 cards. It's like six generic, six class cards. Two rares or higher, a foil, a token, an equipment. Like, it's it's set in a certain way. But anything you open, you have a chance of getting something really good. Or stuff you already have, it's worthless. Um, so on its own, there's some really cool parts about Flesh and Blood. Uh, the, I've been playing it. How expensive it is? It massively expensive to some extent. So... I'm going to talk about what the game is first before getting into the game, because getting into the game, I think there's some really nice ways to get in the game very cheaply and have a fantastic time. And I think you can end there. I, I think you really can. But what the game works, how the game works is it's a 1v1, uh, technically it's a 1v1 game, kind of like Netrunner, but it's technically a bit more symmetrical. You each pick a character, which is a hero, then you have some equipment and a weapon, and you have life totals. And you basically take turns mounting attacks at your opponent, and your opponent can defend, and it goes back and forth like that. Is it a hitting a people game? It is, but I think it, it, that sells it short a wee bit. So I'm going to just look at, uh, how do you do this? Uh, game? Products? Releases? So Flesh and Blood does a lot of really good things when it comes to card design. Uh, there's a really good blog post that talks about like how Flesh and Blood was designed around four tenants to make it better or to fix problems that people perceive with other card games. And I think they actually like did some things really well. First thing, it's not a board state game, which I think is fascinating. It's not the sort of game where like you spend time building a board state, and then once you have a big board state, your opponent's crushed out of the game. It's not like that. You are going to be trading blows over and over again, and it's actually the reverse of that. Because you start with a weapon, which is generally permanent, and equipment that you have to choose when to use, when to block, when to break with them. The game actually gets more... Uh, you actually wear down somebody over time. The idea is that you start at full power, and then through the game you get slightly weaker and weaker as the fight drags on, and you get a bit more... Um, uh, tired out. And I think that's that's really cool. The action starts on turn one. It's relevant. It's cool. And it's not like, like in theory, if your opponent overextended and spent their equipment and you don't have your equipment, you can catch back up. I think that's cool. Um, another big point, and this is the biggest point of the cards, is that the this is, I think, my most exciting thing about that. Every turn in this game, you draw a hand of generally four cards. And so every turn is basically a new puzzle you have to solve because the way that the cards work is very, very nuanced and very modular. All cards have uses in multiple ways, in three main ways. So let's look at this card here. It's called Pedal to the Metal. In the top right corner, uh-oh, in the top right corner over here, this is how much the card costs to play. Uh, in this game, you make things called resources. So this card costs two resources to play. It has an ability. And if you notice at the bottom, this the yellow symbol, that's how much damage it does on attack. So it attacks for five. Um, also in this bottom right corner, it defends for three. So if, if it's the opponent's turn and the opponent is attacking you, you can spend this card, not paying the cost in the top right corner, and block three damage. So this card on own already has two uses. It can attack and you can block with it. But then very similar to card games like Marvel Champions, each card also has a, a pitch cost. And that's these like slotted little resources. That's what they call them in the top left corner. This one, you, you can discard it from your hand to generate one resource. So the idea is that you could discard a pedal to the metal and maybe another card from your hand to generate two resources to play your other pedal to the metal. So each card in your hand is worth resources, it's worth block, it's worth attack, and every turn you're drawing four cards, and it's in your best interest a lot of time to play your whole hand. So figuring out what to block with, what to pitch is what they call to generate resources, what to attack with, is actually really interesting. And I love that part of it that the cards are constantly moving, it's constantly a puzzle each turn, like, okay, I want to pitch this to play this on my turn, I think my opponent's going to block this much, I'm going to block this on their attack. It's really fun, and it's honestly, like, that's my favorite part of the game. The cards are constantly moving. It's a puzzle every turn to figure it out. Another really interesting thing is you notice there might be three pedal to the metals here. One in red, one in yellow, one in blue. And that's because they pitch for different levels. Red cards pitch for one resource, yellow for two resources, and three for blue resources. And you might think, well, then why don't I just play the better ones? Well, because this card, you notice as it gets higher in resource cost, it actually does less and less attack. 
cards scale differently. Generally, the blue cards have weaker abilities, but are better in your deck as one card now pitches for three resources as opposed for one. Sometimes the attack gets less, sometimes the ability gets a bit weaker, sometimes the mounted blocks for it gets smaller. And so it's really cool. Building your deck is like a, a mixture of like figuring out how much resources you need to pitch, but like every hand is playable. I don't know. There's some really good stuff about it, and I've been really enjoying it. When I started the game, they gave you these Ira teaching decks. Uh, so they, they used to have these, and the problem with this game is the accessibility was like real garbage for a long time in the middle of, um, what's it called? in the middle of the pandemic. So these were IRA teaching decks that were swooped off shelves really quickly. Stores were meant to give them to you for free, uh, IRA welcome deck. And it was a very simple ability, a very simple character, and it was a smaller deck. You played to a smaller uh, life total. Uh, the problem with this deck is I tried it out and I thought the deck game was super boring. All it was was people trading hits back and forth, back and forth, that was it. Andre F. Nero, yo, Eric, welcome. Um, that was it. It was just people trading hits back and forth. I bounced off of this so hard. And it wasn't until I picked up this set, which is if you ask me, how do I get into the game? This is what I'd recommend, where the, the, the characters actually had interesting abilities, where they actually will build around. So like this character himself basically plays like Max. It's Max. At the top of the turn, you mill cards out into your, into your banish zone. And if you don't play them, you take damage. And then the more you banish based off the more you push yourself, it's really cool. But the idea is that like I played the first intro deck and I was like, okay, I understand the rules of the game, but this is just boring. It's just like, I'll do four damage, I'll block three. You do six damage, I'll block four. Like it, it just didn't spark anything. But these decks, like once I started playing with the actual game, you realize how interesting these things are and deck building is really interesting and there's a lot of build choices to it. But hold on, let me catch up. It's sad that it's so neat, but also never buying into a game with random boosters. Yeah, sad. It's, I, I, I hear you on that. Let's become flesh and blood cross streamers. Eric, do you play flesh and blood? Which one? You flesh and which one? Blood. Oh, no. Lol. Um, okay. So how do you get into the game? Because the game is really expensive. Like, very, very expensive, abstractly. Because it's only... Um, uh, the way that you get into this game is you have to buy boosters. So if you want to buy a box, which goes for around 90 uh, Canadian dollars, you get like tw 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 uh, 24 packs. You get enough cards. You get actually a lot of cards in it. I couldn't imagine buying in paper. It's actually highway robbery. It kind of is. It kind of it kind of is to some extent because it's like a, a fabricated limited scarcity makes these pieces of cardboards worth hundreds of dollars. So, for instance, I recently bought a box because Maddie and I, my partner, we'll buy a box just to start a basic collection if I want to do deck building, uh, and then we'll play sealed. And that's what I kind of like about the packs to some extent. I've never played Magic again. Like this sort of random distribution model I think is atrocious. But the idea that we bought these packs and then cracked six packs and played games with just those six packs uh, is a kind of a fun format. It actually was neat. And we played that a whole bunch until we opened all the packs. Now I'm showing you this not because I think it's a cool reason to do it and incentivize gambling we opened this the other day in our pack this is a card it's a rainbow foil card called arcanite skullcap this card right now is worth 300 canadian dollars and maddie right now thinks i'm crazy to not sell this thing and yet i don't want to sell it because i guess i have it now isn't that ridiculous like it's kind of ridiculous like this card that i found in a pack is worth so much money like it doesn't make sense to me and in some extent, if you want to play at a tournament at the highest level, a lot of people have to spend a lot of money on their decks, just like Magic, because they need to play full play sets of some of the rarest cards. For equipment, you only need one of them. And this is a generic equipment, which makes it stretch even further because anybody can play it. But like at the highest level, it is very expensive to play this game. So I don't think I'd ever care about like classic constructed format, anything like that, because you have to pay hundreds of dollars for a deck. But hear me out. The last set that came out is called Monarch, and they released for about $15 these pre-constructed blitz decks blitz is a format where you play with a half life total and the game goes a bit faster it's a bit more aggressive these are 15 dollars. you can buy all of these a bunch for like 60 bucks just buy this seriously go out of the store and buy these if you can try the game it kicks ass it's a really good game uh they also have like official decks that they made uh i don't know where you can find them if you go to fabdb.net this is what like my partner and i are playing 90 percent of the time if we don't like buy a box every like I don't know blue moon and, and and play sealed is their official decks made by the people that make this game these starter decks you can't find them really they used to exist but they're very expensive right now but you can build these decks for about five to fifteen dollars it's really important to know that the majority of these decks are made out of commons and rares and you can buy commons and rares for ten cents like the majority of cards in this game are dirt cheap like ten cents but then the legendaries spill up to hundreds of dollars. But like Maddie and I have all these basic decks. We built each of them for like $10 and they're matched evenly against each other. And it's so much fun. 
Like, we're having so much fun playing this. This is Kano, who's a wizard who plays like Shaper. It does everything at instant speed. It's, it's ridiculously interesting. And we're having a lot of fun with it. Straight up, great. Are you being played by Flesh and Blood? No, I'm not. Because, like, parts of this are totally ridiculous. So, that's kind of where I am with Flesh and Blood. I do highly recommend you to try the game out. Because I think it's really dope. I think a lot of pe more people will enjoy this than they think they do. Because the way that it's pitched, two dudes hitting each other, or two people hitting each other until one of them falls over, sounds awful. But the core mechanics of the game are incredibly satisfying, incredibly deep, uh, and they're really fun. Yeah, like I'm having a great time. I think getting into this and playing Castle Constructed, not for me. I know there's a lot of people that don't mind spending hundreds of dollars on Magic the Gathering singles because they are aware that this card will have value. Like this card might sell for later on in my life for more than it does now. And right now it's $300. Like it, it, it's nonsense. But some people value that, that the thing that they invest in can be resold and has value. Like I get that, but it's not for me. Like it doesn't make any sense. But if you can get into a limited thing, like Kat, you're saying I would look into when and if it gets affordable. These decks are relatively affordable. They're fantastic for like 10 to 15 bucks, $12 American, I think. Like it's a fantastic experience. They're balanced against each other. You also do get like good enough. These are because this is the thing that I need to say. And I think this might be my last point. You can play a deck of full commons and rares that are like relatively affordable. Like these blitz decks you could bring to an organized play blitz event and not feel bad. You have a chance of winning. Are you going to beat the best player there with the most expensive deck? Probably not, but you will definitely feel relevant. And I think that's super cool. Got an affiliated link? No, not at all. Um, but that's that's all I'm saying. It's like it, it's worth noting while this, some of the stuff is really expensive, looking at a lot of the most like the official decks, say we go to like decks uh, featured, whatever, and you go to like whatever, some competitive deck here. Can we? I don't know how we, how this works. The majority of them are commons that cost ten cents, but every once in a while, a card will pump out, jump out. That's like three hundred dollars. Like you need a full set of these Art of War cards. It's like three hundred bucks. Andre, hit me up with a link to these blitz decks and DM. I'm kind of interested. Yeah, I can hit you up. Um, I think I actually can make an affiliate link. <laughs> uh, not an ad. Honestly, not an ad. I've just been enjoying this way more than I thought I did to the point that I've bought all the blitz decks. We've constructed all the starter decks for about ten bucks a pop. Uh, there's a local-ish Canadian store that does a really good job with them. Uh, and I bought two boxes. And honestly, having a great time. I, re I took these decks and bought a single box and made these into full-sized, um, like, con classic constructed decks. So 60 cards instead of 40. And I'm excited to play them this weekend. I'm really excited. No, game's good. Game's, like, honestly really good. Uh, the distribution model not a fan of and i understand that most people will bounce off of that hard but if you can get into just like this stuff or the pre-constructed decks you'll have a great time I, i'll nearly promise you the game is really good all right that's my point on fab andre fab here on my fab is dash um i'm one of those azalea suckers azalea oh man azalea is so fun and this is like part of the game that talking about why this is so cool the heroes play radically different to a large extent azalea is an archer and she can only attack by loading arrow cards into her arsenal, which is this like a fifth hand slot you basically have. So it becomes this puzzle of like, okay, I'm going to load an arrow. And then you can kind of like guess that there's an arrow on the top of your deck and swap it with a card in your arsenal to do extra damage. And it's like this really fun, but competitively largely unviable deck that so many like people pursue because it is really fun. And the idea of being an archer is like, you know. Some people are into that, I guess. Uh, I would say that. And Eric, if I can sound a bit more competitive, wizard. Wizard is just sounds so fun. Sorry, let me catch up my chat. I mean, you should probably be paid by a bunch of these game companies you shill for. <laughs> Are you being paid? No. Uh, feature habit by doing unsealing videos on Patreon for the high rollers. Yeah, there's like some weird economies in this whole game. People like split boxes and do like trades and market sell. It's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't touch that stuff. That's the mood I have with all my magic cards. There's stuff in my collection I could probably look at in a decent chunk of cash. I know, but like the thing is like for me, the problem is like Arcanite Skullcap is like shows up in almost every competitive deck because it's a generic that is really, really good. Uh, so if I wanted to feel like, oh, can I play competitive? I kind of need this. And I don't think I'd ever pay $300 for a single card. So like holding on to it feels like I have a chance of maybe playing. I don't know. It's, it doesn't line up well. I like the living card game format better. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it's worth noting that they do like the competitive. If you're like a really competitive person, the amount of competitive support they have for like a league and uh, like the organized events they have in like Vegas, the new sets are coming out. Like there's so much that this company is doing really, really well that if you want to get into something and, and, and be really happy that exists in two years, I, I'm, it's a pretty safe bet. But what the heck do I know? And is each game of fab kind of samey? And R seems to have so many kinds of decks you can play. No, they're not. Uh, I need an incentive. Uh, okay, so for instance, like, look, this is Monarch. Okay, there are four Monarch decks. And Monarch did a bit of a shuffle where they not only... 
each class has a name so they're pretty generic stuff like ninja guardian ranger wizard uh, rune blade whatever but what they did in this new said monarch is they also have talents so uh while he is a warrior he's a light warrior this is bolton and while she is an illusionist she's a light illusionist and they have the dark ones so for instance just to give you the gamut of what you get in monarch this is bolton he has two little axes that are not very good but if you attack with one the next one is more powerful so once you do like do a lot of double attacks and the light characters need to do something called charging which is taking a card and putting it into your soul so basically you need to spend cards from your hand to charge your soul and then you use your cards in your soul to give your attacks go again with bolton and you go frenzy really cool totally opposite she's an illusionist she has these like ridiculous attacks that are very efficient but if the opponent blocks it with an attack of high strength the illusion fizzles so it becomes this really interesting metagame where her attacks are really good, but against certain matchups that can like yell through illusions, they don't do anything. But on top of that, she doesn't have a weapon. Instead, she generates auras that are protective things that, that disappear if they get touched by damage. But then she can weaponize her auras if they exist on her turn. Like, I I'm telling you, it's so much more interesting and nuanced than just like attack five, go again in the starter decks. Uh, Chain is basically max that burns cards off the top of his deck and the cards in his banished zone that he doesn't use hurt him. So he becomes more powerful, but at what cost? And she is a brute that has ridiculously strong attacks. But again, every turn she'll take as much damage as cards in her banished zone if she doesn't specifically discard cards. Uh, it's like so cool. It's like so cool. Isn't the non-foil Arcanite whatever cheaper than 300? I don't think uh, legendary equipment come in non-foil, Smacky. So we need a metro good discord, not just for Neverwinter, but for various other games we're getting to. Yeah, that's probably do uh, probably a thing that should be pursued. How does it match up to Keyforge? I've never played Keyforge competitively. I found this to be way more fun because the decks you're getting, you know, are reasonable. That's kind of a problem with Keyforge. A lot of times I'll play some casual decks and be like, oh, it's not good and just discard it. This dude's so happy about Flesh and Blood, cannot believe we put him in startup jail for a month. He's <laughs> the light of playing powerful cards. It's funny, I'll never play startup again. I like startup a lot. Um, that's my, my flesh and blood line rant. Um, I just wanted to say that we've been playing it, my partner and I, for the last two months, two, three months now. And like, it's great. Honestly, really, really good. I'd consider going to meet up and playing my shitty blitz decks that I spent no money on. Well, next to no money. That's it. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate. But, um, game's good. Game's honestly good. I don't know what to say. Oh yeah, okay, this is actually an interesting thing too that makes some of the prices look absolutely ridiculous. There are some good things that they're doing for rarity in the game. Firstly, when a set comes out, it first comes out as a first edition set that has a very limited print run. Those are the cards, I'll play on TTS with you. Yo, Eric, I'm down. Those are the cards that sell for like absurd amounts. Like people are selling certain, the rarest, rarest first edition cold full cards for like 30 grand, like ridiculous numbers. But it's worth knowing that after a set comes out in first edition, it comes out an unlimited edition that gets an unlimited print run from my understanding and don't buy first edition cards. Whatever you do, don't. If you see the stuff on the shelf, it's like, why is a box $250? It's because it's first edition. You have no reason to touch that unless you want to spend $250 on cardboard. So watch out for that. That is a thing. And I think that's a cool thing. It lets people who want to get into this game for like value and like, you know, chasing really expensive stuff to do that. But again, 10 cent commons, 10 cent rares. If you just go unlimited. Um, on top of that, some of the rarest cards, and they're getting a bit better, but this, this is actually, I think, one of the hardest things for it is like cards like this that are generic and very, very useful at being a legendary rarity are very, very expensive cards. And so far in the newest sets, all of the equipment has been a bit more common and they've increased the drop rates on some of the more rare cards. So it looks like it's veering a bit better. And it's worth noting the most, most rare cards, the fabled cards that show up in like one in 1,000 packs or something are competitively not very viable and exist only as chase cards for collectors. I love that. I don't want to have to spend, if you were going to do this, like having to spend that much money on the rarest card in the game for your competitive deck. It doesn't make any sense. Monarch is the first set that had a worldwide release, as far as I know. I think that's correct. And uh, there's another release they're releasing at the end of this month, an unlimited version of a booster set, which I wouldn't recommend you to start with if you want to get into that because it's a booster set. It's, it's not like a, a set set. Uh, and then there's a new one in September. I'm trying to think of it in Neverland terms. Would it be like a Rashida? Sure, Gamble costing 300 because they're used in every deck, but rare. to some extent, yes. And there is problems with that. 
There are some very generic generic action cards. Those are the ones you want three of in your deck. Equipment, mind you, you only need one of. That sell for like 80 to 100 bucks. So you need to spend $300 just to get these. And in Middle League, like Rashida, they show up in every deck. And I feel like seeing some of these cards, I feel like at such a disadvantage that I don't have some of these cards. I'll admit it. Like the deck seems worse without them. It's like playing without Rashida. Can you win? Yeah. Um, but outside of that, I think a lot of the commons are, are pretty competitive. Like be of opening move scarcity was a constant thing. <laughs> I think it's way less F than their first two sets in terms of money. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're like I think they're realizing that people are not getting into the game because it's very expensive, and so they're uh, they're altering the drop rates and attaching different rarities, to different cards. Like so, there's like a tier list. Legendaries is the second most. Fabled is like the ridiculous one, but Majestics are the 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 ones. A lot of Majestic cards you want three of. And classically from the older sets, the Majestics would sell for like 60, 80 bucks from what I see in the market. A lot of the Majestics from the recent set are like f five bucks. Like there's just kind of more of them. I don't know. I think there's more distribution too. It's also post pandemic. So like prices are a bit more stable. Majestics fog. So yeah, um, a lot of the Majestics from the newest set are like five bucks a pop. So that's a lot better if you wanted to build a competitive deck buying singles, which again, I don't think it's my thing. I just want to play Azalea pre-constructed well the deck that they built for me it's fun i'll upgrade it with whatever i opened in a pack anywho that's it if you don't like flesh and blood hopefully you skip that whole section it's 11 35 we'll do one more game i haven't had the air conditioning on for a while you can see i'm like a bit sweaty it's not flesh and blood isn't working me up i'm, I'm sweating around this 300 dollars card because if i just like look at it wrong it's gonna i'm gonna bend a corner and then i'll have to take out a loan tuning back in just in time give us some spice in the last game of the night yo i'll try i'll try we'll just cut a random card for a ganked that's how we do it uh eric there's a lot of people tuning in they're joining asking like where you were if they missed that so people are pretty pretty excited I think that's a good thing about wearing a dark shirt. They can't tell when you, no one can tell when you're sweating through it, you know? Popular guest star. <laughs> Ooh. When's Pat back on? Generally the start of the month. So that'll be soon enough. Actually, this is worth saying at this point. I'm going to repeat it next week. Um, but the last week of this month, uh, there will be no stream. I'm going to be on vacation. So we'll be back in August with pat next week there will be a stream there'll actually be two streams next week because there'll be a stream on thursday and then in less than 12 hours from that or whatever it'll be nord runner that's been a while since we've heard that name around here uh there will be um there'll be the fight night stream on friday Ooh, alice alice is proper annoying yay vacation yo i'm stoked i'm like really really happy Nanako is meowing this is normally when we stop streaming and she gets pets my son found a $300 Pokemon card, but dinged it a tiny bit while putting it to protector, so it's worthless now, I guess. Chris, get a better son. That's rough. <laughs> Doing well, thanks. Andre likes to pretend he's hip with the new Netrunner plays, but he's an old head like me. Glad you recognize Netrunner. Yeah, right? It's been a minute. I like Netrunner's decks. Uh, I want to get two ice. I want to ice uh, archives. Actually, Mouseless Archives is good enough against uh, Anarchs a lot of times. Um, our opening hand to Green Mill is like actually pretty safe early. If we can top deck another ice, this is pretty good. I just, I guess we play predictive planogram for money. I'm gonna keep this. This might not be good. How long have you been playing? I started playing right before the release of Honor and Profit. So between the cycle between Creation Control and Honor and Profit, that's like what spin. Is Nordrunner deep cut? I feel old. Yeah, he's he, uh, Nordrunner has played for a long time back in the past. Get a better son. Wow, I'm, I'm joking. Thanks, you too. Yeah, okay, we got the ice that we wanted. So Alice wants to run archives. I think we're just going to put this on archives. And I'm actually going to push the Rashida. Rashida seems so important. I don't know what Alice is doing with 50 cards. Nordrunner is like BGG threads old. Yes, yeah. Yeah, Nordrunner is like really, really, really old. Are you going anywhere for vacation? I'm uh, going to hang out with my family. And back where they live. I haven't seen my family in like... A year. It's been a while. Uh, we actually could boost this to two. Um, I'm going to do that because if it fires, if they go through, they have no money. 
Uh, and if it fires, we get our two credits back. As someone above mentioned, I dragged my old MTG cards out of storage, and apparently the stuff I used to play with is crazy valuable now. Yeah, uh, a lot of people were realizing that last year, especially with Pokemon. Just in the last few months, duels and beta are just going right through the roof. Don't know what is going on there. Is it related to the spike in mint condition retro games? Yes. Um, the sealed Mario game, I think, is a bit sus. Like, some people said it wasn't worth the money that people are paying for it. Um, but a lot of it is, like, there's a Pokemon craze just due to, like, influencers and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of it, too, is, like, people pandemic trying to figure it, trying to, you know, hustle. I'll throw out a planner game. We're going to draw three anyways. Dang, you're old? Yeah, a bit. It's fine. I think I look younger than I am. I pride myself on that. Hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you. Pandemic refocus people on what's really important. It keeps the cardboard in plastic. Yo, sign me up. Let's go. Uh, yes. Um, but honestly, like, I'm going to call it nerd shit. But, like, genuinely, like, I mean that good. Uh, that, honestly, is, like, a huge sense of, like, comfort in, you know, the last year. Like, nerd shit was huge for everyone, wasn't it? Yo, did you guys see the new Steam console? Oh my god, that's sick. I'm so stoked to be able to play Hitman on the toilet. Um, I don't have anything to jam here. I think we're just going to go HQ R&D credit. Ping is really nice in front of IP block. I guess we draw once. I'd rather draw than credit. Yeah, that's way better to have in our hand. Uh, we'll put this on HQ. I don't know what HQ pressure they have. Keep trying to talk to my partner and looking at the prices of his old Pokemon cards. Yo, there's some, there's some like bangers out there. The whole market's really goofed up. Uh, we, uh, getting your cards accredited is really goofed up right now. Um, uh, buying top loaders. Like, I'd put this bad boy in a top loader, but you have to buy top loaders for, like, $300. Like, it's top loaders are, like, the hard plastic cases. Oh, that's good to hit. I'm going to gain two. How does one price out and sell about 40 kilograms of magic cards? Uh, generally, you can send them to people who will do it for you. Is your family in Ontario, Quebec? Yeah, I grew up in southern Ontario. I grew up in Burlington. So next we're going to see Alex Frog come back. <laughs> some super old shiny cards all on top loaders. Yo, that stuff is, that stuff is really expensive. I think you might just prefer them sentiment value though. That's legit. Do we throw the book? Do we throw the book? So we have to boost this twice and get credits? I, I think we throw the book here. They'll probably t like, I mean, tilt them as in like they'll go tag me. I think we'll throw the book. This looks expensive, but we'll be making two credits back, which is just enough to res both of our bad, bad boys. Even Amiibo. I have a Metroid Amiibo, the one breaking out of the lab. I pay like three thirty dollars for it on Etsy and it's worth over two hundred now. Lots of Amiibos are. Yo, people love that stuff. Like Funko Pops. I feel like Funko Pops are gonna collapse, but uh, I imagine there's like stuff like that's really expensive. Even states Channel Fireball is a good name for that. Oh, for selling uh, mass cards. Yeah, Channel Fireball is also a big, a big thing for um for uh this is more two credits uh i think we actually draw two cards i want to find that boom uh yeah channel fire barrel is is pushing and supporting flesh and blood pretty heavily they're doing the whole pro scene oh they hit the green mill and couldn't shuffle too oh it feels bad ah oh, bellona okay there are four tags they're actually clearing tags we threw at the psychographics feels bad Let's try and see what we can do here. Okay, well, we're going to economic warfare. And we have seven cards. I think we draw once. It's boomer bust. So I'm going to throw this out. Boomer bust economics. I think we'll throw out the Bologna. We can keep one Bologna. Running parallel. I've used Channel Fireball before, but I live in Canada. Yeah, it's much better for Americans. Okay, so we have some lines here. We have three draws into boom, so it's a one in 10, but we don't have the money to play it. So I think we'll actually just jam the NGO front, unfortunately. Like, I, I want to jam the Bologna, but we just like can't afford it. This looks like, a, that's the problem when you're on low credits. Like this is clearly such an NGO front to the point that I might as well just res it. They're clearing tags. We could top deck boom now. We have the credits. They have an MK Ultra. Damn. Uh, I think we're actually going to hit another Spin Doctor. Planogram would be sick. Yeah, I think we use our second Spin Doctor here. So we'll shuffle back in. We want a Planogram 
And I don't think we need a psycho. I think we just want another uh, hardening news into list so that we can get this bad boy down. Because if we top deck, uh, boom. Okay, no, we didn't. Not good enough. So from here, I think we jammed the Rashida. And I don't think we need to protect it. They're just going to clear tags. This is good. This is good enough. This is good enough. They don't have a killer yet. Okay. Or sorry, Fractor. I live in Canada, but I haven't found anybody else that does a service here that has a good name. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really a magic guy. Unless you're talking about stage magic. All right, just in time. Um, no, we're going to jam out either the degree mail or the Bologna. It's awkward. I think we're just going to set up the Bologna for next turn because they had such a big tempo loss here. And now we can do, we'll definitely government subsidy. And then from here, we can choose what to do. We're going to have to discard a card here. Uh, Funhouse is annoying again. Uh, Alice Merchant's ability got so much worse with Spin Doctor being now is like so much pre more prevalent. We're going to keep this because... We're hoping that they go tag me with the Harding News. So the question is, what do we ice up better? I think this remote seems good enough. They don't have a Fractor yet. They can trace through this. We can pay it more than them. So I think we'll just ice up R&D. This does nothing if they go tag me, so I'd rather not have it. I pitched Flesh and Blood to my partner. He said, I'm surprised you're interested in a non <laughs> game. <laughs> oh no, Smartware Distributor. That is not going to be fast enough. That's a problem with owning games. There's only so much time. You don't want to play Flesh and Blood. We have all these board games. We haven't played Netrunner enough in person this year. Yeah, they're absolutely gutted now. Probably should keep my aura of mystery not telling I got pitched on that by Netrunner stream. Yeah, yeah, no, that will. That might make, make it more make more sense, but also... Yeah, you want to play your cards close to your chest on that one. Okay, I'm just going to do this play so that I can get this. Oh, that's actually bad, too. I don't know why I did that. Because I didn't want to score this and do nothing. But honestly, it's fine. Now they have a lot of stuff installed. The degree mill shouldn't be an issue. Honestly, I want to get this out of hand. So we'll advance, advance, install this. Prepaid. What are they? Oh, they played an iPad Wars for free. Well, damn, that's a lot of. I wonder if they have a Mystic as well. So they just don't have enough money, so we're just going to jam this and try and get ourselves to game point. It's worth noting we don't have 15 minutes on the list, so we actually have to score 3 2 up. It's a variety stream once upon a time. There was Arkham. Uh, we played Doomtown. Doomtown. Oh, I didn't talk about this. Doomtown's getting a second core set too. They're like rebooting it. And it's. Oh, man. We'll talk about that at a later point. Doomtown's such a good game as well. Just a couple weeks to stream. Hope everything's going well. Frisbee, it's going really good. It's been a nice summer so far. We got a tournament we're streaming next week. Maybe Eric will show show up. Um, I got vacation after that, which is bad for people who care about stream, but good for me. It's been nice. Ingolo in the bin, they can't afford it. They have a botulist cooking here. Uh, okay, so we can double advance, ice this up. I don't think we have to do anything fancy here. They only have two credits, so as soon as they run, we like throw the book at them, right? And this is still worth keeping with. Three subroutines is so good. Saw a sneaky Sunday stream either this weekend or last weekend. It was last weekend, yeah. Man, we play Argus. It was terrible. It was really, really bad. I felt bad. I feel really bad when we like build a deck and it just like absolutely soils the bed. I just feel like a waste of time. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe we learned something and made friends along the way. Okay, and Golo came down. Their money has rectified itself a wee bit. This doesn't do anything on score, but we are now on game point. We have some annoying stuff. So this, pretty good at breaking things. That's eight influence we've seen on two of these. Uh, we're going to see a hippo come down. Hippo's really good with this because it's, it's pretty limited with how far I can kick, right? I just remembered we have tortilla chips. Oh, sick. I don't know why this made me think of tortilla chips. All right, they're on six credits. Another smartware, okay. We just need top deck and agenda. So, ooh, Stargate's out. Uh, hedge fund, so I think we're gonna do, we probably can planogram to draw. Probably too late, right? 
tonight for wait for what okay that worked out so we'll put a Rashida in so at least we got through a deck faster that actually was a good temple planogram um I think we'll just hedge fund we haven't res a lot of our ice I'm worried that we're gonna have to and Enigma is not very good against Angola we, we don't want to res that too late for tortilla chips never I can eat in my sleep oh <gasps> right on luck sick so this says make a run at the run ends trash one piece of ice as res so they either trash the ping or the f2p so i'm just going to feed them the ping honestly ping is pretty annoying because they don't have a paperclip yet but i'm going to give them the tag to draw two i'm going to res both things yeah whatever i don't care i'm gonna pay for it for this we break even we're just trying to keep their money down, right? So they get a trash one or eyes after the run ends. It doesn't care if the run's successful. This is a good card when you pay for nothing. Fortunately, our ice placement is a bit backwards. Right? Like we should have had this in front of it, but time is linear. When Fab first released, I pitched the idea to my playgroup. Get it? Pitched because it's in the game. Oh, fire all? Okay. I'll give the runner one tag. Um, okay. But none of them wanted to collect a game. We just like the idea that NR, it's never who has the better cards. We all have the same set. Same with the board games, I guess. You can't pay a person in winning because they paid more for the money card. I like even playing fields. Yo, Invader, I totally agree with you. And I think that's exactly why I've been attracted to the, the pre-constructed decks, the official decks that we bought for like 10 to 15 bucks because they're all of the equal play level and we're not going to touch them and still have like so much of the game to experience i hear you no i totally agree it's uh feels terrible when uh you lose because you feel like you've spent less money i think i've settled with the fact that i'll play ccgs casually with friends borrowing decks so that's my that's my limit yeah, that's cool respect so we're gonna hard hitting and use them again unfortunately okay so we're gonna ugh. They get back into the game, and then this is what we do to them. Okay. Uh, here, what do we do? We have Funhouse IP block. Too many cards in hand. We definitely throw the book at them. We'll give them three tags, which they'll clear. We have another one. So I think I want to jam something that looks suspicious at the same time. <laughs> Man, ping is so good. How much is the... You have to paint? Boost? Oh, no, it's not good. I don't think we're going to raise that. On money perspective, they aren't. I agree. I'm surprised devs are still putting oh, out CCGs versus LCGs. They seem pretty inferior. Um, no, they're not inferior. Um, not at all. Well, let me finish the turn. I, I know what you mean, inferior, but they're not. They make more money because there's an aftermarket and people are more likely to trade and get into it. Uh, uh, there's good reasons to do a CCG thing. It also allows you to play things like sealed and draft, which are big parts of the competitive field of... Um, of uh, Flesh and Blood, like you have to play multiple formats. It's not just constructed. But I agree with you. I, I, I like the format way less myself. Okay, so that's good. Okay. And then we'll just throw out some of these cards. Yeah, not from a money perspective, exactly. I see what you meant there. So we need this for the boom. Economic Warfare is fine. We won't res this. Planogram is fine. I don't think we need another there in Geo front. And we'll get rid of the ice. Okay. Let's hope we don't get wantoned through the turnpike. You have five tags though, and only five credits. Let me scroll chat. So we only need to keep six credits to consult for boom. If they keep at least uh, two tags. So at this point, it looks like it's happening. Do you want to give them six clicks or draw four cards? We're going to give them six credits. I don't know what they can do with 12 credits. I don't know what they could have done with four cards, though. Maybe they had Deuces Wild. Draw into Misdirection. I don't know. <gasps> oh, cool. Cool. So it's an IP block. They have to break the second subroutine. The first one doesn't matter. So they spent six. Oh, man, that's great. So they're going to... They can't win off of this. Oh, I got to remember this. Oh, my God. If I don't Spin Doctor, I was going to forget Spin Doctor. Well, they can't even steal the Bologna. 
So we'll get this back in. I guess we'll get the Bologna back in. It's unstealable. Choose a card to discard. Uh, okay. Team Covenant did a good series of podcasts about what kills the game. I think a lot about CCGs versus LCG. I really enjoyed listening. They also did another after L5R got killed. Yeah, LCGs, honestly, for what it's worth, are actually really bad for stores in a lot of ways, right? Oh, they stole a degree mill off of uh, R&D, right? Like, they have to carry a lot of products. There's rotation, a lot of shelf space. Like, it's there's a lot of reasons why it's not ideal. Oh, we top deck boomed. Damn, we're good. So 75 credits to their 45. So if I switch, ah, beans. It's midnight around here. I gotta shut down my stream. Yeah, I can't, I can't swipe. Hey, thanks for the game. When you're an adult with money to spend, you realize how much it costs to build real decks. CCGs are maybe more palatable when you're young and you can do whatever to call collect up and build your deck. Yeah, trading also is a big part, which is nice. There's a lot of people too for like these sort of games that will like give you free decks, like free intro decks of commons because they have extra stuff. Like there's some nice parts to it, but yeah, that's enough flesh and blood, I think. Uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, that deck actually I think is pretty all right. We need to try more of it to see what it lines up against some of the best decks in the meta. I'm not saying it's super competitive, but it looks fair. Like our ability seems reasonable and it's like an NBN that cares about tags that's not CTM, which is nice. There's a lot of different CTMs in Fight Night. They're all fighting on different ways and it's really fun to see them. Uh, that's going to be it for the stream. We'll be back in a week streaming this Thursday. We might have White Blade to join us. Uh, if not, well, regardless of that, on Friday, we will be streaming the Fight Night, our final leg of the Fight Night, which will start here around 3 o'clock Eastern. Um, so tune in for that. I'll be joined by Yusengren and Kat to do some commentary for that. I'm really excited to have people on this channel. Uh, otherwise, this... Is it Friday or Sunday? I think it's this Sunday at 1 o'clock. Oh, let me double check. But uh, at 1 o'clock... Oh, I have it here. Hold on. This Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern, uh, Netscape Navigator, Aki, they're going to be streaming uh, the second round of Fight Night, so check that out. I'll okay, keep messaging you every Friday. Nice. Never really traded cards when I was younger. Do people do that regularly? I had Pokemon as a kid. I never knew how to play the game. I just traded cards to build a collection. One of these days I'll be right. Um, that's going to be largely it. Huge shout out to everyone hanging out in chat, everybody watching the VOD. Hopefully you're taking care of yourself, enjoying your summer. It's really hot out there. Uh, hopefully you're, you're staying, staying cool. In more than one way. Hey, uh, for all the people we played games against today, good games, have fun. Uh, good game. Thanks for playing. Uh, we'll be back in a week. I'm going to try and put a video together this weekend. We're going to try and do like five basic tips uh, in Netrunner. I'm going to try and put that together this weekend because, again, not next week, but the week after we'll have off. So we'll push some content in there. Yo, Macro, long time VOD viewer, first time stream watcher, live in Sweden. Yo, it's really late for you. So can't usually catch the stream since they happen early morning for me. Super fun to be able to watch. Yo, glad you can make it. That's really, uh, that's really nice. Thanks for the comment. Um, Stay tuned next week for more derailment. Hey, that's largely it. Enjoy Eternal. That's a thing you can do now. And we'll be back in a week. Take care, y'all.